We are live! Hi everyone! Welcome to the very first Beauty in the Boutique follow along makeup tutorial. Today's tutorial, Katie, tell me, what are we teaching? We are teaching amazing eyeshadow looks and party looks all ready for the festive season. Wow, I, so a few days ago, um, we put the message out and we said, what do you want the most help with when it comes to your makeup looks for all your parties that you're hopefully gonna go to over the festive season? And you told us that you wanted to know a great makeup base, glowy cheeks, lifted eyes, yeah. and I think the, the overwhelming um, response really was nailing the smoky eye. Especially if you've got a hooded eye. Especially if you've yeah. got a hooded eye. So, Katie and I have been working in a way in the background this past week, planning everything exactly. I'm gonna teach you. Um, now, full disclosure, before we get started, what neither- What did say? <laughs> <laughs> Panic. <laughs> neither of us has had much sleep. No. <laughs> Worrying about going live. <laughs> so I I did get to sleep to about two and then just kept waking up in the night yeah. thinking, must remember to put my phone on airplane mode. Yeah. Oh um, must remember to get clean brushes. <laughs> I don't know why I keep using this as a microphone. <laughs> Studio Panic. two. I was like, must remember to speak. <laughs> just also to say we aren't wearing makeup now. No, just no in makeup. case you thought this yeah, was the look. Don't worry. No it well, gets better. It gets better. Okay, so are you ready, Katie? I am so ready. So I've got a whole host of amazing products here to teach you some really easy, foolproof party makeup tricks. And hopefully you guys have got some stuff at home as well so you can follow along with us. Yeah, that's what I would, well, that's what we would really love. Mm. So I'm hoping you've grabbed your makeup bags. If you haven't, please, 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 please go grab your makeup bags now. Because I've tried to make this as, well, I'm hoping that you'll have similar items already in your makeup bag so that you can use what you already own. Okay, so we've prepped our faces. Um, to go right in. Now, first tip. This is a controversial tip. Oh, what are you gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't know what you're gonna say. So, as a makeup artist, the, the right thing to do is to always start with eye makeup first. However, I'm thinking about people at home doing their makeup themselves and getting the best results possible. So what I'm going to tell you to do at home is we're going to actually apply all of our makeup first and our eye makeup last. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is, is that when we apply our eyeshadow, we can be guided to how kind of heavy or how light to go by the rest of the makeup we're wearing. Yeah. And I think for most of us women, we're not out there doing smoky eyes every day, mm. um, making, you know, doing loads of eyeshadow looks. But what we are doing most days is putting a bit of foundation on and a bit of lipstick. A bit of blush or something. A bit of blush. Mm. So what I want to do to help make it easy for you and to help you really get an intuitive feel of how dark or light to go with your eyeshadow is we're gonna do our base makeup first and our mascara first so we can then Ooh. judge yeah. how much eyeshadow to put on because there's nothing worse of doing a whole smoky eye look and then thinking, yeah. oh goodness. Because you can't get that off easily. I can't get that off and I've got no, my lipstick's too dark. And I've got to be out in half an hour. And I've got to be out in half an hour and it's gone wrong. <laughs> This way, if your eyeshadow goes wrong, you can wipe it off really quickly, dab a bit of concealer over the top and you're good to go. So, that's my first tip. Exciting. Right, okay, so, put my hair back for you. The first, first product we're gonna use is, I've chosen, someone asked me about concealer for dark circles. Now what I'm gonna actually use first of all is an eye, it's a, eye priming concealer. So this is a concealer that you can wear under your foundation, but that brightens this bit here. 
a lot of us, so if you have a concealer at home, I'm gonna teach you how you can use your concealer in a whole new way to get the very most out of it. You don't have to use this one. You can use what you already have at home. However, this one is really good because it's got caffeine in it. It helps take puffiness mm. down. And it's just one color that's kind of universal and it really does brighten the under eye so that when your foundation goes over the top, it looks just lovely and bright and lifted on the under eye. Do you know, when eye. I first saw this as well, I was like, oh my goodness, that's the wrong colour. Because it's a really yeah. strange colour. Yeah. Well, not strange, but it's like a peach colour, It's isn't a peachy it? colour. Thank you. And the reason this works is because it um, counterbalances all the kind of discoloration under your eye. Okay, so when you're applying your concealer at home, you're gonna use this finger here, and this finger I call your ring finger, and the reason you're gonna use this finger here is because it has the lightest touch on your face. If you could test that out now, you'll find that this finger always has the lightest touch. So your ring finger is your best finger for, I'd say, applying and blending makeup. Yeah. Now, where possible in this tutorial, I'm gonna try and use my fingers as much as possible because I want to make this accessible for everyone. Yeah, not everyone has loads of brushes at home, do they? Not everyone has loads of fancy brushes, and I think if I can teach you how to do amazing makeup just using your best makeup tools, your fingers, yeah. then that's a massive win. Yeah. Okay, so I will just say as well, if you have any questions during this live or after this live on the replay, um, I have a team of amazing beauty experts in the wings at Beauty in the Boutique. They know everything. Yeah, they're at Beauty in the Boutique HQ and they're ready to take your every beauty question. Hi girls. Hi girls <laughs> back at Beauty in the Boutique HQ. Um, so they're really, really the top of their game when it comes to everything there is to know about beauty. They've got great worth experience, plus I've trained them all personally. So you will be getting yeah, top professional advice won't you yeah so do ask away because um i want you to get everything out of this tutorial that you need to yeah. get okay so we've got our ring finger ready excuse my spot on my lip that just decided to come up last night oh, i thought graceful. convenient convenient <laughs> <laughs> okay so what we're going to do and when you use your concealers at home i want you to pat the concealer just into this bit here Okay, we don't need to worry so much about this outer bit here because it doesn't get so much darkness. But by patting and pushing the product in, you're gonna get more coverage, which is where we need it. Now, if you start feathering, it's gonna thin out the coverage. So pat it in. Now, don't worry because when you first do this with a concealer, you think, oh my goodness it's not gonna blend. Just like patience, isn't it? You just have to be patient, yeah. there, I think. So Katie, what I'd say, where you've taken it right the way across, yeah. which is fine, try when you do the next eye, just putting it in the middle just of the in here. Because if you look, can you see in the camera, Katie, can you see that most people have darkness? In the corner, yeah. Just there. So you don't need to put so much here so you can save your concealer at home, it'll go further for you. And when you get to this bit, you can feather out to that bit but if you find you've oh, just really? thought oh my goodness I've applied too much you can take your fingers and just feather it down into your cheeks and that will just blend it really lovely so rather than blending it outwards like that if I just show you Katie you blend it gonna, down onto the cheek yeah if you have found that you've just got too much on you're like oh what do I do with oh, this yeah. you don't need to wipe it off so can you see just by applying it just in this middle bit here and it, this is a great tip because I had a question someone was asking about um, concealer going into fine lines. If you're focusing mostly on the inner corner, most of us have fine lines, really, you yeah. know, our lovely little smile lines there. So that you don't need to put so much product there. Okay, and the thinner the amount of product, the less creasing you'll get. Yeah, that's so true. Really, it out makes really it thin out the product at the edges here because you don't really need it. You just need it here. Okay, I'm gonna put another layer on. So again, if you want to get more coverage, you're gonna go in with a second layer. Now, what I'm gonna say is, I've got two eye looks to show you. And I'm going to do one 
eye look on this eye, which is gonna be a smoky eye for hooded eyes. Yeah. And on this eye, I'm gonna do a party, sexy-esque, smoky, winged eyeliner look. Ooh. For a hooded eye, but also for someone that just doesn't wanna do a smoky Full eye, smoke, yeah. but wants to get a kind of really sexy look. Yeah. And I've kind of based it on, um, a while ago I asked people um, if, if they could learn a celebrity look, you know, who would, who would they like to, to learn? Um, a lot of people said, I can't say her name, Mina Kunis, Mila Kunis. Yeah. That lovely girl. Yeah, <laughs> Mia. Mia, that's Ooh. it, sorry. And the other person was Jennifer Anderson. And Jennifer Anderson, I think her eyes, they never look overdone, but they always look pretty sexy. And, and just sparkly. That's what I think people like to have, like sexy eyes, but look a bit special. Which is yes, smoky yeah. Eyes, I'm not going to use, I'm actually not going to use sparkle in this, because I'm thinking most people on a Christmas night out, they're going to be wearing their sparkles yeah. or wearing their sparkles on their ears. So I want to keep the makeup just soft, and sexy and smudgy looking. Yeah. And when I say smudgy, I'm talking like, so nothing looks like you've tried too hard. That's the thing, a nice thing about smoky eye is it doesn't have to be perfect because no. it's smudgy. Yeah, I'm gonna teach you a way that you don't have to worry about things that are perfect. Excuse me if I'm not looking at you, it's because I'm attempting to do my makeup looking <laughs> at my phone. I'd also use that as a get out of jail if uh, my makeup starts looking rubbish because I can't actually probably see what I'm doing. Okay, so that's your concealer done. So I hope you've learned something in that. Now I'm going to use a foundation and I'm going to go for quite a full coverage foundation. Now you might not have a full coverage foundation at home, doesn't matter, you might not like to wear a full coverage, a, a full coverage uh, foundation. However, I would say if there was ever a time to try a really perfected look, mm. it's for festive parties. Yeah, absolutely. And also the more, you know, it will, it will stay on a little bit longer because of that full, full coverage. However, this one that I'm using, I the Alibi, this. which mm. it's fairly new in on beautytheboutique.com and if anyone wants to see what we're using, you can find the links above and I think the girls at Beauty and the Boutique have also put them in the message, but you can also just write in, write in, tap in, you can fax <laughs> us, you can <laughs> fax us, send us a tele <laughs> telegram. <laughs> Oh, a pigeon's just flown in. Hang on, someone wants to know about this foundation. Um, the girls will answer you. So, we're gonna put a pump on the back of our hand. Now, we're gonna do one side of our face first of all with this. Mm -hmm. We're gonna leave the other side free because this foundation is, what I mean, we're obsessed with it. Oh, I'll, I'll do, do this side. I'll do this side as well. Right, so my, I'll tell you a story about this foundation. So my mum has used the same foundation for years and she um, caught one of my videos the other the other week where I used this but me and you used yeah. it and she was like my mum's birthday's coming up and she was I said oh what do you want for your birthday and she went oh do you know what I'd really love that foundation oh, did she? yeah oh, that's I said, so nice <laughs> and I, I, I said oh you up for change you know trying a new foundation she went yeah it just looks so good oh, so that's really yeah lovely. that's high praise yeah. indeed isn't yeah. it yeah yeah so Okay, you're gonna get your foundation, you're gonna put it on the back of your hand. This is like your mixing palette. Now, assuming your hands are clean. So you're gonna tap in like that. Now, I'm not using a makeup brush because I feel that I get the best results of foundation when I use my fingers. I think it, most people put on foundation It fingers, really helps melt the foundation into your skin. And I've gotta be realistic and think about you applying your makeup at home, you know, regardless if it's for a party or you're in a rush, I wanna teach you the ways to do it that's easy mm. and accessible. Okay, so we're gonna start off, when you apply your foundation, your foundation at home, you're just going to initially focus around the areas that need coverage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on most people, it's around the nose here. Yeah, I get a lot of redness there. Bit of redness there. If anyone's got rosacea or redness on, on the cheeks, you're gonna do little whiskers like that. Foundation whiskers. Center of the chin. 
center of the forehead, down the nose. When you perfect these areas, the rest just comes together. So put it on and then on the areas that need more coverage, we're gonna stipple and pat that foundation in because remember, it's about coverage and when you want more coverage on an area, by patting the product in, you're gonna push it into your skin, you're gonna get more coverage and it's gonna look more perfect. And for areas that don't need as much coverage, you're gonna further and blend that around. So that's just a really helpful tip for your makeup at home. Now, I'll just, excuse me as I don't look at you, apologies. I'm just looking at applying <laughs> a lot my- of places to look. <laughs> trying to apply my makeup in the phone. Especially around my nose, I look such a difference. Yeah, and I oh, think especially, you know, yeah. winter when we've, we've had colds and whatnot, you know, your nose does get quite red. And, you know, around the corners of the lips, I'm gonna cover that spot in a minute. Please. <laughs> okay. You now, don't need to use very much, you don't do need you? to use much. Now, I'm also gonna take this and I'm gonna pat it over that concealer because this is like an under foundation concealer. So if you're ever worried about getting the wrong concealer colour, just by putting this underneath and putting your foundation over the top, it won't even look like it's you've like got a safety con net. I yeah, it won't even it? look like you're wearing concealer. Your under eye will just look brighter and more perfected. And your foundation will go over the top so it all looks like one seamless colour. Okay, so I'm patting in. I'm not wiping like that because that's just gonna wipe off the under uh, eye concealer primer. Now, because we're gonna do our eye makeup, you're gonna put a little bit of the foundation on your eyelids. And that will just help not only keep your eyeshadow on for longer, but it will also help the eyeshadow color look truer to the color that it is in the palette. It's just like having a perfect face, I suppose, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. But what I will say is I'm not, this foundation doesn't need any setting powder, but what I am gonna do, and I suggest you do the same, is if you put foundation or concealer on your eyelid, you are just gonna need to put a slight dusting of face powder over the top, so I'm just gonna do that now. Is that just to stop the, like, it creasing? Yeah, it stops it creasing, but also when we put our eyeshadow over the top, the powder help the pow the face powder setting powder helps the blending of the eyeshadow. Oh, right. yeah, because I it would, assuming it? your eyeshadow is a powder and not a cream, because it just helps the slippage of the brush and the blend of the shadow. So that's a really good tip when you're blending your eyeshadow. If your eyeshadow is a powder based put a touch of powder on your eyelid and that's really gonna help that, that blending. Yeah. Can I get a bit of powder, please? Oh, I haven't got any. There you go, let me give you a clean sponge. Oh, thank you. Okay, so this to me doesn't look heavy, but what it does look is just slightly more perfected. How am I looking? Yeah, it's nice. Difficult it's, difficult with no, it's very difficult with no mirror. <laughs> and being blind. <laughs> yeah, it's looking, I mean, if we look at the colour of your neck. Oh, I can't see, but I can okay. see. Okay, so we need to blend it a little bit more okay. around here. So what I would say Thinking is, um, to help you make it easier, just take a little blending brush. Oh, now, just to fuzz the edges? Uh, you just fuzz the, fuzz the edges. You don't have to do this, but where it's set, just give it a good old fuzz. Thank you, Mummy. So it's a really good match with your neck. And look oh how it's goodness. taken down the redness. Now, because it's such a perfected look, once we put on bronzer over the top, because we don't want to look like a little kind of like porcelain doll, it will bring back the contours of your face. And I'm gonna show you later in this live tutorial how you can sculpt your bone structure just using a touch of bronzer. So Katie, you're ready to do the other side Please, because I look crazy like this. <laughs> look like I've been smacked on one side. <laughs> okay, so let's go on for the other side. 
again so I'm going to put it around the areas that I think I need most coverage so I'm wearing shade bloom Katie you're are you wearing shade pillow. pillow sometimes I do wear pillow if I haven't got I've got a bit of fake tan well, on. that's the thing isn't it I do yeah. that if I'm on holiday or something I know I've got a bit of fake tan on my face you can always mix the two yeah. together can't you um do, is anyone in my camp that wears fake tan on their face in in winter yeah, you always put like I a, always do. But it's so subtle, you wouldn't know it. Doesn't no, look No, I always, um, I, there's a product that I'm obsessed with. It's called Hishi um, Overnight Tanning Balm. Mm. Um, I think uh, the, the girls at Beauty and the Boutique will share a link to it. But it's really subtle, so you don't have to worry about your hands looking a different colour to your face. But in the winter, I feel that where I look a bit more pasty, having that touch of just tan to my face I think it just it for just one thing evens out, it evens it? out your skin but also when you wear a self tan if like me you get dark circles it helps the dark circles not look quite so um, severe because there's less contrast of, of darkness I must say the first time I used it I was like I'm a bit scared I'm gonna put it on at night and then wake up in the morning yeah. it's gonna be bright orange yeah but it's so minimal yeah it's no it's just really such nice a subtle it just makes you look healthy doesn't yeah, it yeah it really does I put that on last night um obviously I knew I was gonna do the live and I thought I've got to look half decent I've got to look half decent <laughs> without my makeup on oh throw me under the bus <laughs> didn't give me that memo <laughs> No, you come as you are. <laughs> okay, how are you getting on, Katie? Yeah, good. I think I've nearly done. Is anyone following along at home with their makeup? I'd love to know how you're getting on. Oh yeah, that'd be really nice to see yeah. some pictures as well as for the end result. Or if you're watching on replay, or you can save this video and actually follow along, grab your makeup bags after That's a good idea. and practice your party makeup doing what we're doing here. That would be really cool. I would love that. That would actually really make my day. Yeah. Okay, going to put a little bit of um, just powder on my lid there. Now, coming up, we have, as well as the amazing smoky eye on this eye and Jennifer Anderson eye on this eye, I'm going to teach you how you can create an eye lift just by penciling your brows in a particular way. Are you ready for your socks to be blown you off? <laughs> <laughs> Could you just check my face, please, for me? Have let let me have a look in there. Oh. Yeah, it looks really good. Thank you. Yeah? Lovely. Right, like glasses. Okay, so, before we do our brows, I'm gonna show you, with a little bit of bronzer, how we can bring back a touch of contour back onto our faces. Because when you've perfected your face, such as this with this foundation, um, are you, you don't have to worry so much if your foundation is, if your skin peeps through your foundation, I think you don't have to worry about this step so much. But I think if you're wearing quite a full coverage foundation, putting some sculpt and contour back into your face yeah. really does just help. Well, it looks Bring more back. natural, doesn't it, it? It looks much more natural. And regardless if your foundation is quite sheer, by putting a bit of um, bronzer just over the top, it actually makes your foundation look like you're not even wearing foundation. Yeah. Because naturally, our skins aren't all one colour like this. They have different shades going on. So a lovely bronzer helps bring your foundation to look ultra, ultra real. So we're using this bronzer. Katie, you're using a slightly I've lighter one. Shade me. Toffee. I've got shade toffee. I've got shade biscotto. I've used this bronzer for years. Toffee, it's yeah. matte, um, but it's really finely milled, and it, it doesn't look it doesn't look like bronzer. It it's just, very delicate, isn't it? Very, it's very delicate. Soft. Yeah. So the brush we're going to use is we're actually going to use. Um, oh, what we're going to use? Have a, we're actually going to use a blush brush for this. Oh. Now, if you don't have um, any, um, you probably would need to use a brush with a bronzer, but say you've only got a couple of brushes at home. Um, so at this, I mean, I could use a bronzer brush, but do you know what, I'm not, I'm gonna use a smaller brush because 
With a smaller brush, when you use a bronzer, you can get much more sculpting in, whereas mm. when you use a bigger brush, it covers much more surface area of your face and gives it an overall glow, which I think is great for summer. But in the winter, apply yeah. your bronzer with a slightly smaller, smaller brush. I'm also gonna give some tips on this, on how to hold your brushes as well. I'm using um, this set here, this Nike brush set. It's really um, affordable for this whole- They are amazing. Yeah, it's really good. And I think if you're not- I've had mine for ages. Yeah, they last for ages and they're just a, a, a good investment. But you know, if you've only got one brush at home, get yourself a microfiber cloth like this Every time you use your brush with one product, assuming it's powder, dust it off, clean it off, so you can use it again for your next product. Yeah, that's and that's good. a good way, if you haven't got a lot of brushes, you can get the most out of the brushes that you already own. Okay, so we are going to swirl in our bronzers. Hopefully you can do this with your bronzers at home right now. And then we're gonna tap off because, tap, tap. Oh, I just broke my bronzer. <laughs> Awkward. Awkward. I'm going to tap off because we want to apply less and build up the colour mm -hmm. as opposed to put too much on and then think, oh my goodness, what on earth do I do yeah. with this? Having said that, if you do apply too much bronzer, don't worry. Yeah. You can always get your loose face powder and give that a dusting over the top and that will really help shear it down. Yeah. So that's a great little tip. Um, one second guys, I've just broke my bronzer on the floor <laughs> and I've got the dogs walking oh, around in it no. that are then gonna tread it into the carpet. Two seconds, I'm just gonna give it a little wipe up. Katie, hold get the, the Get the hoover out. <laughs> get hold the floor. <laughs> we do cleaning tips, <laughs> makeup tips, animal okay. tips. Right, bam bam, no walking in the blusher, please. Okie dokie, right, okay, so let's, oh, what have I done with my brush? Oh, oh dear. You've, you've gone all of a dither. I've gone all of a dither. Yeah, what's this? Oh, it's here, oh, I've know. got it, I've got it. Okay, are we ready? I'm loaded. Okay, so we're gonna start off, first of all, we're gonna start off on our cheeks. Mm -hmm. So to do that, you wanna really apply this on here, mm -hmm. so if you feel the hard part of your cheek here, but rather than swoosh, we're gonna use a bronzer and we're gonna push it up because I feel when we get past the age of 45. I wouldn't know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, certainly for me, I want everything to go up. Yeah, So oh, yeah, sure. Hold the brush lightly. What you don't wanna be doing is when you apply your makeup is you don't want the, the brush display because can you see how big a surface area that mm. gets to you don't want to do that you just want to hold it you want to tickle the skin and you'll also find another really really good tip when you're applying your makeup at home using your brushes if you want heavier coverage or something hold the brush nearer to the bristles that will give you more control and more coverage because it's a heavier Dense of um, weight. If you want more lighter, natural look, hold your brush more at the end, and that gives you a much lighter touch to your that makeup. That was a bit of a game changer when you told me about this. Yeah, that it really, seems obvious. It but... seems obvious, but give it a try with your mm. brushes at home. Okay, so I'm gonna push up like this, and the idea is for your just to have a very subtle glow. Okay. Can you see how it doesn't look overly obvious? But I am just adding in a little bit of definition back into my face where I've perfected it with the Alibi foundation. How's mine looking? Yeah, good, really nice. It's so yeah, subtle, really nice. isn't it? Yeah, really, really nice. Then, because we want to then, we want it to all look like a wash of colour. So we wanna take what's left on our brush, we're not gonna re-dip it into the, the bronzer, and we're gonna take it around our hairline here because we wanna connect what we've just done here. Does it go all the way down to, to, to here, did you say? Yeah, so where working? you've pushed it up here. Yeah, oh, and then sort gonna, of to join them. Too. Yeah, right, that's it. it. Okay. Can you see? 
Oh, that's really good on you, Katie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it looks really nice. I can't see anything, but thank you. <laughs> okay, next up. Dab off. We're going to take a little bit under our jawline and down our neck. This just helps strengthen the jawline. We're not using it like a contour, it's just looking, we're just, I just want it to look really natural. If you had like a low cut top on, you'd put a little bit on your delicate arch as well. Now if you're wearing your hair up, I want you to put it on the top of your ears. And if you're showing your neck, I want you to put it on your That's back of your neck as well. Because it yeah. just really makes you look natural, isn't it? Yeah, no one wants it to does. look like they've got full face no, of bronze no. on. On your eye, what eye is it here? Is it this eye? Yes. That eye there. It just needs, I think I just need to give it, you've got a little bit of loose powder or something there. Let me just blend that out oh, for you. Thank you. I will say, well, Katie, you need glasses, don't you, applying your makeup. So <laughs> it's very difficult. Katie is applying her makeup. I'm a trooper. Uh, <laughs> she's really taken off the team <laughs> because she's applying her makeup with, um, well, you would say yourself fairly. I can't see very well at can't all. Can't see very well at all. I glasses. don't even know where so, I am. So, um, is that you, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? I thought it was Christian. <laughs> but it does help having a makeup oh. artist sit next to you. Let me have a look in there. That's better. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sorry. Thank but you. I don't want to be. No, no. It's you, just, I, I don't want to help you. Boss me around, it's fine. So, top tip, okay. If you're someone that really needs their glasses to apply their makeup, like Katie, or you are applying your makeup in not good light, you've got dim light, perhaps you know you don't have great lighting, then what I want you to do is get a brush like this. This is called a stippling brush. Can you see it's kind of got lighter um, bristles at the top. These are all vegan, these brushes. Lighter bristles at the top and denser ones at the bottom. Now we sell one brush like this that I'm kind of like, it's the, no cakey makeup brush. Mm. Hopefully, um, Beauty and the Boutique girls will give you a link to that if you need it. But what this does is when you're worried that your makeup might like look cakey or not very well blended, this type of brush you will take and you will literally go all over your foundation and your bronzer and your blush you wanted just like that. And it really helps just smudge it all together mm. and take away any harsh lines. That's a really good tip because if you can't see your makeup application mm. very well, this kind of brush is a little game changer. So this is in part of that Nancy brush set, but also we sell a really cool little brush. Um, oh yeah, the little chunky one. Yeah, a little mm. chunky one that um, I absolutely swear by to, uh, as well. If you don't have a brush like this, then I would say you could take a bronzing brush, any fat kind of brush, um, just make sure it's really clean, there's nothing on it, and just give it a very light swoosh. The reason I like a brush like this is because when the, this is so fine up here, it doesn't take off half your makeup. It just very delicately blends it for you. It's kind of like the hand of a makeup artist. Oh, what? <laughs> I need that. I need that in my life. Well, I've got you. <laughs> you got me, mate. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. Okay, so what we're gonna do as well, and I'm gonna do this before, although I'm doing a smoky eye on this, I'm going to do this on the socket here because when you apply bronzer into your socket, not only does it help merge in all your other bronzer, but it also helps just give a little like pop to your eye mm. and lift to your eye. So we're gonna take a eyeshadow brush. If you didn't have an eye brush, eyeshadow brush at home, you could use your ring finger, just very, very lightly pat on and just push up if you didn't have an eyeshadow brush. If you do, then just pat and then go backwards and forwards like a little windscreen wiper. Not, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not like making, um, it's just a very subtle, can you see what it does by adding back the depth of colour here and not having any makeup here, just your foundation, you've got light and you've got shadow. Can you see the difference? 
I've just yeah. put bronzer here, nothing on here. Now, if you have a hooded eye or you want your eye to look very naturally more open, just look at the difference of how much bigger this eye looks to this eye. And I've just used that bronzer. Now that's really foolproof. Just pat it on and then you're gonna push it up into that socket. Now, if you have a hooded eye that's quite low like that, you're gonna put it over that little bit of hood there. Do you know what else that you showed me this age yeah. which I think helps? Yeah. When because my eyes are quite hooded. And mm. then when rather than looking like that into the mirror, oh, where yeah. you think, if you look straight on directly and then just go above the crease. That's a, that really helped me. Yeah, that's a really, really important tip actually. So a couple of tips here when you're applying your eyeshadow using a mirror. First tip, what, often when we, so I'll go for sideways, if I go to apply my makeup looking straight on like that, pretend you're my mirror, I've been using you like my mirror. <laughs> um, if I go like that, I don't see hardly any of my lid. Okay, so that makes it quite difficult to do my lid. So what you'll do is hold your mirror low look down into your mirror and apply your eyeshadow. That gives you a lot more surface area to see. And then if you have a hood, Katie, do you want to show the tip I shared with you about the hood? Please. For applying the makeup over the hood. So it's to look, like, rather than looking down, just looking straight on yeah. like this. So I can't see, so it's hard to use a mirror. And then going above your actual crease, yeah, so you're, you're, yeah, so then you would, I'll show you how to do that when we move on to the smoky eye bit. Yeah. But there's a couple of tips there of how you hold your mirror when you're applying your eyeshadow. Yeah. Little tips that just really help, I hope. Now, um, okay, let's just, I that always have Q-tips because they're just really handy for neating up anything. Do I need blending? No, it's all looking lovely, Katie. Perfect. So you put the bronzer on this side, yes. nothing on that side. Nothing on this side. But can you see, so I've just got bronzer here and foundation there. Can you see on this side of our faces, it just has made the foundation look so much more natural. Just more real. Just mm. more real. So it's a really good tip when you're wearing foundation to get it to look hyper, hyper real. Okay, we're gonna do the other side of our faces. Then I'm gonna show you a way you can do your brows to give you a brow lift before you even hit your eyeshadow. Oh my goodness, I can't wait for that. Are you ready for your socks to be blown ready. off? Ready. Right. I'm just gonna open a window because it's I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling hot. Right, one sec, one sec. Katie, hold the floor. I don't think it is hot. I think it's just uh, your hormones. <laughs> Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna going in on the other side. Yeah, you go in on the other side. Not the eyes, no, just cheek. Your eyes as well. Did you put it in your socket? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna do eyes as well. So remember, recap. If you're only just joining us now, recap on applying your bronzer with your foundation to make your foundation look hyper real. You're gonna tap in. Hopefully, you're following along with your own makeup at home. You're gonna tap off. You want to start off with a little and then build up. And then we're going to start kind of from the middle of our pupil down on the cheeky part of our cheeks here. And rather than swoosh, we're going to move the brush up. So it's pushing our face upwards. Yes, please. So it's giving us a lift. So let's lift with the bronzer. One, two, three, lift. Come on, ladies. One, two. Come on, ladies. Lift those cheekbones. Step aerobics. <laughs> Can you see? Lift, lift, lift. Yeah, nice. I probably applied a bit too much. Okay, if you find you think, oh, I've applied too much, all you would do, you would get a little bit of loose powder, swirl in, and then blend out. And that will just, so if, you, if you've ever put too much bronzer on, do that, and it really just does help take, take it down. Okay, now we're gonna marry that up here. On our nose, jawline, that helps strengthen the jawline, take it down your neck. If you've got your hair up, tickle the tops of your ears. If you've got your hair up, tickle the back of your neck. 
because when you're wearing your bronzer, you don't just want your, the front of your face to have that lovely glow. As you're, as you're moving, you want that glow to be all the way around so it looks more natural. Okay, I'm lastly going to apply a little bit on my eye. And this is regardless of the eyeshadow look that I'll be doing. This gives me that base of lift. So again, bronzer on that eye, nothing on that eye and to me this eye just looks a little bit more it's lifted. even just like an everyday little eye yeah, track, I, eye look, I mean it? honestly I do this every single day I wear this bronzer every single day and I do this with my makeup every single day and it just gives me a healthy glow I suppose it's just like your regular routine yeah it's like my regular routine it's you know, it doesn't take me any time. I think that's why people get worried about like party makeup and stuff because you you could do your own makeup routine with your eyes closed, really. Yeah. Like, you know, it takes me mm. like three minutes to just yeah. do stuff. But then when you, I know I'm going out, I yeah. don't know what to do. I have to think more. I don't know if it's going right. That's well, the hard Well, this part. is why I want you at home when you're doing your party makeup to actually apply all your favorite makeup first. Your favorite foundation, your favorite concealer, your favorite lipstick, your favorite mascara. Get confident in how your makeup looks because most of us aren't applying smoky eyes every day. And it kind of, that's when we start getting nervous. So apply your regular makeup first, then do your eyeshadow last. Now I know that's counterintuitive because as a makeup artist, I should be telling you, do your eyes first because if it drops down, you can wipe it off. We can wipe it away anyway with a Q-tip. But the point is, when you feel confident in your base makeup, and you, and you know the makeup that makes you feel confident, when you go to apply your eyeshadow, it means that you can judge how dark or how light or how yeah. heavy or how smoky you want to push it because you can be guided by the color of lipstick you're wearing, the amount of blush you're wearing, yeah. and it will just help you feel more confident. Yeah. The other thing as well, if you do go wrong with your eye makeup and you're in a rush and your partner's saying, come on, we've only got five minutes, and, and you're like, laying oh. on the sofa for the last yeah, hour. Yeah, laying on the last sofa, <laughs> looking on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> you have been at my house. <laughs> You can be like, oh my God, it's gone wrong. You can wipe it off and then you can just put a bit of foundation on the top, set it in place and just go with your it's regular makeup. Yeah, that's true. I mean, let's not, put too much, let's not put too much pressure on ourselves because if we're wearing sparkles at our party, mm. that's enough. Yeah, and, that and it is might enough. be a dimly lit room. It's, so it it may be, will be. At you. Exactly. <laughs> Also, it's really important to remember that a lot of us worldwide have been on lockdown. We have not been out to do our party eyes in a long, long time. No. A lot of us are feeling underconfident with our eyeshadow. Yeah. So, you know, use this tutorial as a time to practice. Watch it on replay, watch it on one evening, get your makeup bags, yeah. follow along. There's nothing to lose, is there? Nothing to lose, fun. everything to gain. I really want you to feel confident and happy with your makeup. Yeah. Plus on replay, you can fast forward me. <laughs> I mean, that's... And just listen to me. <laughs> we've got a little... Someone little wants to bam. come and have Someone some makeup. Someone wants to help. Oh, bam, bam. He's I'll been there for ages. He's been there for ages, <laughs> wanted to get up. Okay, right, Katie, have you done bronzer on the other side? I have, how, how am I looking? Beautiful, yeah, it looks really, really good. Thank you. Really good. Now, do you remember before when Katie's, um, when you'd had half a face on, and it looked almost like, oh, is that gonna go right or wrong? Mm. Mate, nailed it's it. It's true, because when you put it on, you're like, yeah. is this gonna be yeah. work, the right color? Yeah, but honestly, to totally, totally nailed it. <laughs> right, who, hands up, if you're ready to learn the technique that lifts your brow Me. with your favorite brow pencil. Me. Me. Get your brow pencils, everyone. Two second warning, get your brow pencils. Okay. If you don't own a brow pencil and you've never filled your brows before and it worries you, I'm gonna show you a way to make your brows always look natural. Now, the top tip is when you're choosing a brow pencil, is to try and find a brow pencil that is a similar colour to your roots. Oh okay. Root grey. <laughs> um, if in doubt, you know, just go for a kind of um, uh, 
any tone that's got a slight bit of ashiness to it. Yeah. You don't really want to find anything with too much red in it. So if you go for more of a cool tone, even if you're a warm term toned person, go for a cool tone. It will always just look a little bit more natural. So um, I've handpicked, as I do with everything on Beauty in the Boutique, this brow pencil. It's one shade and it pretty much works on everyone. If you go onto beautyintheboutique.com, you can see this in action. I've made a video just on this. It's got one universal shade here, which depending on how hard you push the pencil will create more depth of the color, or if you hold it lighter, it will you know, work for lighter hair basically. Mm -hmm. So it works for light and dark hair. But the best thing is, it's got a dual ended cream pencil here, which you can use here to create more of an eyelid lift. Yeah. And that's what I'm gonna show you. But if you don't have this pencil, don't worry because you can just use your pencil at home and still follow my tips. Now at this stage, I'm gonna have to pull the, the camera Please. closer. With, so apologies, with Katie. I've got a dog on my lap as well. You are a trooper. Um, this is what you call trooping, trooping I can for see womankind. <laughs> Look, here's, oh, can you see? Oh, no, you can't bam, see, I've got Bam Bam on my lap. Um, let me just make sure my hands are clean. Okay, so, Katie, you're you right following along? I'll stay you here watching the... in the background. Yeah, okay. It's easy for me to see you like that. Okay, so. There's nothing playing. <gasps> oh, mate, that's... Who's that? Alexa. Goodness. Oh. She's listening. She's listening. Okay. She's learning. She's, she's learning. She's got her makeup out. Right, so you're going to get an old mascara wand, mascara wand, and you're gonna give it a wash so it's nice and clean, or you can just buy these little spoolies. But I'm trying to help you with what you've already got at home. So, clean spoolie. The trick to doing your brows is to always brush up your brows so you can see the shape. Then take the tip, when you get to the arch, brush them down there. Okay, because this is really going to help show the shape of So I haven't brushed this one, but I've brushed this one. Can you see already, I am seeing much more of my natural shape. Now apologies if I'm not going to look at you at this point, because I'm using my phone as a mirror, as a way to do my makeup. I'm also going to apologise that it might mean as well that I don't do things as well as I normally would, because I'm attempting to <laughs> teach you and do my makeup. And look in a phone, a dog. and look up after a dog that's on my lap. Okay, it does make a difference. So even just brushing them up. Oh, it does. Yeah, because it helps you see your natural shape. Mm. So if you have a pencil at, uh, liner at home, um, make sure it's sharp. So, I mean, I always sound like a broken record to it, all of my mates, but I'm like, just invest in a. Um, eyeliner mm. sharpener because sometimes if you use a regular pencil sharpener it breaks your nice pencils mm. um okay so pinky finger this is going to be our stabilizer okay if you're worried about a shaky hand i'm going to use a stabilizer here pinky finger this is our stabilizer it helps you pivot your hand you don't have to worry about going like this feeling shaky stabilizer don't worry if you need to reapply a bit of concealer after, we can do that, that's not a problem. Okay, we're gonna go in. Now, most of us have fairly gappy bits round here. Okay, we have the least amount of gap, uh, hair here normally. However, I want us to keep the start of our brows quite light and feathery because when we go in and feel too much of this part of the brow, that's when the brow starts looking like it's been drawn a bit on. Heavy, yeah. It looks a bit heavy. Now, if you're ever worried about, oh, where my brow should be, where the arch should be, really, really easy thing you can do is take a, something long and thin, hold from the corner of your nose, that tells me where my brow should start. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna do a little dot there. I'm gonna be like, right, where should my brow end? Hold it diagonally from the corner of my nose. It should end there. Where should my arch be? Hold it diagonally through the middle of your iris. My brow, my arch should be there. So that's just a helpful little tip. Okay. 
left. I'm actually gonna have to hold my mirror while I do oh. this and look in here. So I'm gonna wanna strengthen this hairline here. So I'm gonna use my pencil and you're gonna use your pencils at home to draw, use your stabilizer, little hairs. Now, because hairs grow in different directions, I want you to look where, how your hair grows. Does it grow that way? Does it grow that way? Usually you'll find that they grow the majority of one way, but some grow another way. So I want you to copy that in, your, in the hairs that you're gonna draw, because we don't actually want the brows to look overly perfected, because when they look overly perfected, they start to look drawn on and fake. So I know that I've got some going this way, and you'll notice when I start to draw the hair, this is how you draw them. You start and you flick up, flick up, Flick up. It's almost like little individual hairs. Isn't little it? individual hairs, kind of like you're almost doing little microblading on yourself, like that. So it means you've got a heavier base, but as you flick up, the line at the top is much more wispy, just like a normal hair is. Wispier at the at the at the end, but more thicker at the base. But hold the pencil lightly, and you can build up. If you hold the pencil too firm, you end up applying you could end up applying a little bit too much. Okay, so I'm strengthening out the hairs there. Now, can you see already, just by creating more structure here, it makes the arch look higher. Look already, I've literally done a few little strokes. Look how much higher that looks compared to that look. I do this technique every morning. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that part there. I know that my tail should be here, so I'm just gonna now go into the hair and just pencil in a few little hairs there. That's where my tail disappears at the end, you know? Like yes, yeah. so you're gonna do the same technique that I did there, but you're gonna pencil it down to where your tail should be. Remember, you can hold the pencil, see where it should end, and just pencil down to there. Now, I don't want this part to look thick and heavy. I want it to look gappy and wispy, but still the structure here. Because when it is wispy here, it means that your eyebrows will look much more natural. Now the next little tip I'm gonna share is how you can create a slightly higher arch. That will give the look of an eye lift. Now, if we, if we imagine we, we want our eyes to be more lifted, hold your finger and you'll be like, you don't want it lifted there, do you? Maybe you do. Unless but you're surprised. Unless you're surprised. Ooh! <laughs> but if you want it to look lifted in line with your cheekbone, you want it just above the arch. Remember I showed you where right to find your arch. Too. Just above there, we're gonna create this subtle look with pencil. And to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to draw literally a millimetre, even half a millimetre, just over the arch here. And in turn, by making that look higher, we're gonna make our eyes look more lifted. Okay, are we ready? Now, probably you probably can't see, but my hairs here start to go down. Like, that's how they're growing like that. So remember, because they're growing that way, I'm gonna pencil the pencil them in that way. But I'm going just slightly over the arch. And remember, I don't want to lift here, I want to lift here. So I'm making sure that I only really go over my brow on this section here. Now, if you need more help with this, I have made a full tutorial on this pencil on beautyintheboutique.com. It's really easy to use, it's really natural. Now look at that lift, Katie. That looks so good. And I've literally done a few strokes. A few strokes. I love doing brows, it makes I such mean, a difference to your face. That's the it? thing, when people are thinking they want a lifted eye, they always think, I need to get eyeshadow to do it. Mm. You don't. You just need to find a really good brow pencil and you just need to learn the tips. And I hope that you're getting really good tips today. I'd love you, um, obviously, <laughs> I'm like concentrating on what I'm teaching you, but if you feel you're, you're learning something today, would you be kind enough to let me know? Give me a thumbs up 
any reaction, it really helps. Um, it really helps boost my confidence, to be honest. <laughs> it really does. We love reading the I, comments. Yeah, I did. I didn't get much sleep last night, so I was really worried about this morning. Oh, yeah, I was worry, just like, I really, me. well, I was like, I really wanted to teach everyone everything yeah. I knew, but I was saying, oh, am I going to be boring? And anyway, I hope you're learning something. So uh, let's just finish that off. When you're finished, can you check me, please? Thank you, everyone, for your thumbs up. That really <laughs> helps. That, honestly, it, genu it genuinely does. And then you're just going to push up. Okay. Lift. I mean that. Look. Natural. Let me look at you. Oh, yeah, that's oh, really good. nice. How are you getting on, Katie? Oh, can you check me? Let's have a little look. Let's turn the camera. What? Katie, you've done amazing. Oh, have I? Have a look. Look. Oh, that's so and you've good. got the arch in just the right place. Thank you. I was taught well. Right, are oh, we ready? Amazing. Are we ready to do the other eye? If you haven't got your brow pencils out of your makeup bags, please go get them now. Please follow along. I really want you to get everything you can out of this tutorial. Yeah. That is my goal in life, like to it. help you feel confident with makeup. I feel like a teenager. Oh, it's you lovely, know, like isn't doing it? your makeup. It's so nice. And it's so nice doing our makeup together as well. Okay, so let's do the other eye. Remember, you're going to brush up, brush it all up here. Can you see how much that's helping me know what my shape is? And then you're going to get the tip. Again, you can use an old mascara, just make sure it's clean. I must say, that's a big help. And it take the tip brushing. down there. That really does make such a difference. Okay, now, let's get up, now nice brow and close. Mine's much gappier than the other one. Yeah, you will always find that one brow is gonna be easier than the other, and you'll also, what I'm gonna say is, please do not worry if your brows don't look perfectly symmetrical. Personally, I think the, when they look less perfect, they look more natural, and as they say, these are sisters, not twins. So don't worry. And if you make a mistake, you've got your Q-tips, you can take it off. Plus, if you feel you've applied too much, you can take your old mascara wand that's clean and just brush it through. So there's, you can't go wrong. There's yeah, another tip as well. If you feel you've put on too much color, perhaps you're using a shadow or something, you can take your loose powder and you can just dab it over the top and that will take down the color and it will look a lot more uh, less heavy if, if that's what you were worried about. Okay, so remember here, we're gonna draw in the hairs. And remember what I taught you, it's, it's kind of like, a, it's a little pressure and then it's a flick up. And that way you really do mimic the hair because it's like the root and then the tip, the root and then the tip. Remember, hair is a lot thinner at the top than it is at the base naturally, so that's what we're trying to create. You're using your pinky finger as a little stabilizer. This is helping you pivot your hand and you're just following along the real structure of the brow hair. Don't worry about any of this or any of this just get your structure here. And remember, we don't want it too heavy here because if we make it too solid here, it's gonna look drawn on. If you're worried about thinking, mm, where, where do I start? Remember here, let's hold it here. That's where your brow should start. I really love the fact that this pencil, there. is you can easily build it up. Because you when you first it put it on, it's quite soft. But it's if you very going, soft. And if you, if you wanna have, if you've got really blonde hair, just press lightly, but if you've got more darker brunette hair, even going towards black hair, you press it's harder. Great, because often when you have black hair, you don't always want to have a black brow. It can look too it, it can look too heavy. Um, if in doubt, if in doubt, go one shade lighter than your root, if in doubt. But this is a universal colour that pretty much works with every for everyone. Okay. So you ready? We're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to create your lift again. So if you need to see it a second time or you've grabbed your brow pencil at home and you wanna follow along, do so now. Okay, remember, we don't want the lift here. We want the lift here. Almost like 
follow your cheekbone lift. This is where we wanna create the look of lift on our faces. So it's just directly over our arch. So the area we want to enhance is this tiny little area here. It's like a centimeter of the arch. Apologies if I'm not looking at you. It's because I'm trying to apply my makeup in the phone. I always feel rude if I'm not looking at you, so apologies. Um, okay, stabilizer. Remember, this hair is growing downwards. So we're gonna draw very little hairs downwards. How are you getting on, Katie? I'm quite pleased. Are you? You know, sometimes when you do your brows, you're like, oh, it's not yeah. going right. Can't work they, they look amazing. Oh my goodness. It, may, it makes yeah, you, I looks really it, good. Do you want to show everyone? It's a much more useful look when your brows look sort of fuller, wow. don't they? I mean, look at the frame. You've got no mascara on. It You've really done nothing else to your eyes. Do you know what, girls? If you, if nothing else, and you're going out for a party, your brows yeah. and mascara done. You know, you don't, you know, don't stress about the smoky eye. I mean, I'd love you to continue watching to learn all my smoky eye tips. If you think you've learned a lot so far, you just wait for my eyeshadow tips, mate. Mm. My so I don't even wear socks anymore. <laughs> yeah, they've been, <laughs> they've blown, off. been blown off. Your socks have been blown. I well, I hope every I hope everyone's enjoying it at home. I hope I really I really hope I'm teaching you all good tips. You know when like tips. before, but when when you were younger, like a teenager, and you were going yeah. out, yeah. and you'd all get together and get ready, and it was like such good fun. Yeah. And now it doesn't feel like fun when you're going. Oh, well, it doesn't for me. Oh, I'm I like, I love oh, it. it's quite stressful, but. This is what this is quite nice. It's taking me back to being a teenager. Yeah, well, do you know what? Uh, my favourite way, I mean, for me, applying my makeup in the morning is it. It really de. I have a lot on go through my mind before work, thinking, oh, I've got to do this, got to do that, da 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 da. And as soon as I open my makeup bag, there's something <laughs> that just Aww. makes me go. Mm. <laughs> and then I put on like a podcast or I put on music. And for five minutes, five, ten minutes, it's just your time. It's just my time mm. doing my makeup. I've got a cup of tea next to me. And I see it as a bit of like, it's my one bit of the day that is just for me. Every yeah, other bit true. of the day is working. And then after that, it's doing household chores and all the rest of it. Right, okay. What I'm going to do, that's the brows finished. Now, because I've been touching a lot around my eyes, I'm just going to add a touch more con uh, foundation just to lighten that up a bit. Remember what I told you. If you need to do this at home, don't wipe, just pat. And when you start putting your concealer on, you pat, you're like, oh my goodness, it's going wrong. Don't worry, just keep patting, keep patting. And it all starts to blend in beautifully. And when I'm doing my makeup at home, and even when I'm doing a client's makeup, after I've done their eye makeup, I'll always go back in and just apply another layer of either of the foundation mm. or the concealer because you can see now I've got my bronzer on. It's really bright. It really it? brightens it. Oh, I want to do that. And can you see how much it just lifts my bone structure? So, and then I might tap up it along there. Another great tip: if you put a little bit of bronzer down your nose, this is a great little contouring tip. This one. Um, Oh, where's my, my uh, what do you need? Uh, that's where I might put it on here. Put a bit of bronzer down there. Take your foundation, put it down the centre of your nose, give it a bit of blend, instant nose contour. I mean, how easy is that? Done. Top up here. Okay, so in just a second, I'm going to be teaching you Smoky eyes for hooded eyes on this eye, and I'm going to be teaching you a sexy Jennifer Anderson party eye on this eye. Right, Katie, are we ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Good. I was born ready. <laughs> Is can everyone let me know? Are you feeling like a little bit more confident doing your makeup? Have the tips so far? Do you find? Do you feel excited to do your party makeup? Yeah, Let me know. I would really love that. Idea. I want people mm. to enjoy makeup. It's there to be enjoyed. Yeah. You know, it's it's just fun. Isn't it's it? just fun. Don't be scared Don't of it. It, it. It can all be taken off. It doesn't matter. No one is going to think your makeup looks 
that, you know, looks bad. It, I'm gonna teach you all the tips mm. to get it just right. And if in doubt, just wear your smile. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the beauty of this. Right, now, do you remember this eye, this eyebrow pencil? Mm -hmm. Got it. Now, if you don't, I'm assuming you probably wouldn't have a pencil like this at home, but don't worry because you can use a little bit of um, concealer. On here is a very light, creamy pencil. And the reason this is here is because when we put this just underneath our arch, what it does is, you remember I helped you create that lift in the arch? This just perfects the skin underneath it, which in turn helps the eye look more lifted. Just very subtle, but it does look a little bit more lifted there. I'm gonna do it here. Again, I'm using my pinky finger. Okay, so we have not even started with our eyeshadow yet, but we've got already a much more lifted eye mm -hmm. from the concealer tricks and from the, the brow, um, the bow, 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 <laughs> bow. <laughs> okay, controversially, hear me out, I like to apply my mascara first before I you apply my eyeshadow. That, don't you? Yeah, now I know that as a makeup artist, I should be telling you to put your mascara on last. However, I do have a theory about this and it's an important theory. Do you remember earlier in the video when I said, listen, apply your favorite makeup first, then your eyeshadow last. It will help you judge how much you want to put on. Yeah. Apply your mascara first. It helps your eyeshadow look better. So when you're doing your eyeshadow, you're building your confidence because there's nothing worse than putting eyeshadow on and think, oh God, I've gone wrong, yeah. I've gone wrong. Put your mascara on first. It doesn't matter if you get a bit of drop down because we can dust it off and we can reapply can the fixed, mascara. It can all it? be fixed. But I want you to get your confidence in your regular makeup before you start doing all the fancy kind of smoky eye stuff. Because when you get your makeup right of how you like your makeup to look, the rest becomes so much more easier. So the mascara I'm gonna use is this mascara. It's a new one I've hand selected to go on Beauty in the Boutique. I've tried this one, I love it. You love this. Mm -hmm. Personally, okay, I've chosen this because not only is it great for sensitive eyes and it doesn't smudge, and it looks extremely natural and pretty and fluttery, I've chosen it because I know there's a lot of women out there that don't want really heavy, thick lashes. Personally, how you I like that I, look, I do love a really full lash, but I wanted because I know we're going to put a lot of eyeshadow on. I wanted to keep the lashes quite soft and pretty. Mm. Um, plus, this mascara, it, it's it it's it it doesn't really clog. Yeah. I mean, famous last words. I'm probably probably on now. <laughs> it was a real cloggy mess. But it hasn't every time I've used it. No. It's always been amazing. And it has just the right amount when you pop it out. You don't need to scrape it off, and it's great for sensitive eyes. Okay, mascara tips coming up, okay? I'm gonna teach you some mascara tips that's gonna help your lashes look fuller and thicker without having to apply loads and loads of coats. So to do that, you're gonna hold your wand right at the root of the lashes here. You're gonna press that wand up, press that wand into the root and you're gonna subtly bounce it and very little wiggles. It's a bounce and a little wiggle and a press. Just on the roots? Just on the roots, because the trick to getting great mis looking mascara is to getting most of your makeup right on the roots of your lashes, and then you lift up with the remainder of the mascara. And what that does is not only does it give you a real framing of the iris and a real full and thickness to your lashes, but it also helps keep less on the tips of your lashes, which helps prevent clogs or mascara t uh, sticking together. Now, just a reminder, if you have a makeup question, perhaps it's not related to this party look, perhaps you have another uh, beauty question, please do ask away because Beauty in the Boutique uh, beauty experts are answering you live and also once this is finished, myself and Beauty in the Boutique um, 
team will be on there helping as well. Now, all the girls at Beauty and the Boutique and the Happiness team, they've all been trained by me. So they've got great expertise. And they're super lovely. And they are brilliant. They're, lo they're the loveliest people. They're not, they're called Happiness Team for a reason. Yeah, exactly. They're really, really lovely. Um, can I just say, Yes. I have just bounced on the roots. I haven't yeah. gone anywhere else. Yeah. Look how much that's defined. Let's have a look. So you've just applied it on Literally the Literally just bounced it on the yeah. roots, haven't even gone any further. But yeah. look how much like, it does. framed that is. So if you're someone that doesn't like to look like you're wearing mascara, this tip is genius because you just bounce and it gives you a frame to your eye without you even looking like you're wearing mascara. I will say that this mascara in particular is very pretty and natural looking. So bounce and then lift, bounce and then lift. So the, the bounce motion is kind of like a press, a wiggle and a bounce and lift. So the technique you're using with your hand is press, bounce, sorry, bounce, wiggle, lift, bounce, wiggle, lift. How are you getting on, Katie? It's amazing. I, I Isn't it really lovely? love this. Because look at that. Let me see. Oh my god, have you got it on the bottom lashes as no. well? No. Oh, that looks stunning. It's so fluttery. Yeah, That's why it really, really love looks it. fluttery. But also, like, I would happily wear this in the daytime as well. It's not like oh, just a Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'd say this is more of actually a daytime mascara look anyway, but because we're putting, gonna put on quite, um, quite a smoky eye, I mean, you could always go and put a more full, a full lash on, but. I just want to keep it, I want to keep this tutorial so people can stop where they want to stop when they think, oh, that's enough yeah. for me, or or they can keep going. Yeah, there's no actual rules to it. No, it? there's no rules. You. You, you do whatever is good for you. Okay, so when it comes to your bottom lashes, don't put your mascara back in. You're going to take what's left on your mascara, first of all, mm -hmm. and you're going to coat pretty much the same. You're gonna bounce at the root and then take down. Bounce at the root, take, take down. And then once you've got your first coat, you can apply a bit more. The reason I do that for bottom lashes is you want to build up a very fine layer on your bottom lashes first and then build up on it. And that will help prevent any kind of clogginess. So we're gonna do that now. Oh, paint myself in the eye. Now, what I tend to do is focus on the roots first of all, and then when I want to create more length, I hold the wand vertically and coat. So if you love a doe-eyed look to your lashes. I didn't even know those lashes existed. You know, yeah. like the ones that are like almost yeah. invisible on the inside. Get the get the right in there, because you want the right, the wet, the frame weight. You have the frame go all the way round. And if you like your lash, if you want to enhance the lift of your eye, what you're going to do is going to go in with a second coat and you're just going to use the second coat on the outer corner. And what that is going to do is just going to very subtly take the eye upwards. Yeah, my lashes are longer than I thought. Yeah, I mean, I've got to say this is, I know I like a really full mascara and this to me is quite fluttery and pretty, but... Yeah, it's really, it, it's very youthful looking this I'm going to say I, I absolutely don't want to be with that mascara. I Have love it. Oh yeah, that looks lovely. Really pretty. But look how it's just, if you didn't put any eye makeup on, it's just framed That's enough, your, isn't it? it's just framed your natural eye colour. And what with that and their brows? Yeah. It's so You don't have to do all the... Lovely. Okay, so... Mascara done. You can add more layers on if you wanted. We're going to do the other eye and then I'm gonna show you the nude lip that goes with every single party look. I'm also gonna show you a technique that you can do if you don't own a nude lipstick at home, how you can make your favorite dark lipstick be nude. I'm speechless. I don't know what You'll have to is. wait for that tip. <laughs> I've gotta quickly do this other mascara. Right. Hang on. Now when I do my other eye, so rather than go across my face like that. Oh yeah, so you don't end up with it on your nose. Yeah, so I don't end up with it on my nose. I, I know this is silly, but I pretend my mascara one's a little flute. <laughs> like that. You've always and then, been a flute. And I though. go like that. 
and it really helps me get my mascara on the other on the other um, eye. Okay. So Katie, whilst I'm applying my mascara on the mm -hmm. other eye, yeah. have what Christmas parties are you going to? Well, I'm do going tell. To, I'm going to an back. amazing uh, Beauty in the Boutique party. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to that. And then I, there's one uh, from the kids' school. There's a ball yeah. that we're going to. Oh, that's nice. The thing is, it's like I don't know. Is what... it a charity thing? Yes, yeah, charity. Like I raise money for the school. Oh, nice. But, um, Everyone's like, oh, what are you wearing? I don't know. I think I'm just going to have to reuse. Not have to. I just, I think I'm going to reuse. I've got so many yeah. clothes. I just need to think a bit differently. I think I need a little day of going through my good, wardrobe. you always whatever. You're oh, so... thank you. So every year, um, myself and Crispian, Crispian's my husband, and also um, works um, at Beauty and Boutique. We run the business together. Um, every year, Crispian and I planned what we call Pretendmas Day at Beauty we are the Beauty. So it's Christmas Day, but obviously not on Christmas Day, so we call it Pretendmas Day. And Crispian and I plan a whole day for everyone at Beauty in the Boutique, where it's like presents in the morning, breakfast, you know, little buffet, croissants and Bucks Fizz, and That's then uh, we all get ready in the office together, and then we're going to Christmas music on. Christmas music on. Then we go out and see something like a. Uh, we're going to a theatre. Going to the West End. Yeah, the theatre production. And then we're going uh, to dinner and dance. Yeah, and the best dinner thing and is. Dance. Best thing is about it is. Crispian always ends up holding everybody's handbags. Yeah. So uh, before, do you remember we were on the dance floor and he had like 12 handbags yeah. hanging around his neck? So poor, he's a trooper. He's a trooper. Poor Crispian is the only guy at Beauty in the Boutique. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, a, it's a, a company full of amazing women, women and um, poor Crispian puts up with all of us. <laughs> he's quite a good little Agni aunt as well. Yeah, he's brilliant. Um, hi, Crispy, and if you're watching, I'm jolly well hope he is. I think he shared this video of all his mate, not this video, but my one I was promoting it. He shared it with his friends. Oh, so sweet. Try and. Um, okay, so we've done our mascara. Has I'm hoping that my mascara tips have helped you. If you ever get some mascara down on your face, I mean, I'm, I don't want to tell you how to suck eggs, but obviously, wait for it to dry, then take your Q-tip and um, just blend away. Now, Q-tips, I these ones are recyclable and all um, sustainable, but the ones that I like to find are the ones that have got a little point on the end. Yeah, they're much They're really good for, better. really good for makeup. Okay, so, when we're doing eye makeup, we want to, um, because if we're going to make more of our eyes, we obviously, we want to have our lips looking lovely, but we want our lipstick to not be centre stage. Mm. However, what we do want to do is, as we get older, we want to make the most of our natural lip shape. For sure. And to do that, we want to wear a lip liner. Not only does lip liner stop it going up into the little um, lines, but it also enhances your natural lip shape. So, um, I am going to wear a liner. Oh, I haven't tried this. Yeah, it's lovely, this liner. If you have a liner at home, just grab it. Doesn't matter what color it is. If um, I'm using a liner from a nude lip wardrobe that I'm gonna create right now. But essentially, if you want a really good lip liner to invest in, get one that's kind of like a pinky shade that has a brown undertone to it and you can wear it with pretty much every every lipstick now top tip for lining your lips to enhance their shape i'm going to do two techniques so you can see the difference okay pinky finger sorry my lips have got dry we're talk, talking so much have a sip have you got some water mm, no it's all right don't worry Sorry. Okay, pinky finger. This is your stabilizer again. Bring back your stabilizer. Makes it so easy. Now, you're gonna, rather than start lining your lips here, you're gonna start from the corner and go oh, I'm start up. The middle. If you start from the middle, 
you still get a nice effect, but if you start from the corner and go around, you'll get a better, more fuller lip shape without even going over your lip, natural lip line. I'll show so you the just difference. just follow the line. Yeah, let me move this closer. Okay. Okay, everyone, excuse me, I've got really dry lips where I've been just chatting. Okay, right at the corner here. And you don't have to worry about getting the line perfect because you're gonna feather the line. And feather, I mean it's like short little strokes like that. Sorry, Bam Bam's Hi, coming Bam over. Bam Bam, you can Bam Bam help. is still here. <laughs> Hi, Bam Bam. Bam Bam. Very helpful. <laughs> Very helpful. Keeps moving from my lap to Katie's lap. Really convenient. <laughs> we love him though, don't matter. Okay. Can you see? Feathery line. Handy when the dog Bam Bam's moving. just moving all the time with me, <laughs> so I can't line. even get a steady hand. Okay, this gives you the steady hand. The, the pinky finger here. Okay. I've, don't worry about the thickness of the line because we're going to fill our lips in a minute. Then the other side, if I line the other side like this from here, you'll see that this hasn't gone over my lip line, but it will enhance the shape of my lip line. But if I go this way, I tend to, it makes the lip look thinner oh, because the actual, your actual lip, there's a little ridge just above the lip color that I've actually gone on on this one. Can That's you see? Amazing. I've got the ridge there, but by drawing my line that way, I go under the ridge. But by drawing my lip liner this way, I go on top of the ridge. And if you want your yeah. lips to look, yeah, if you want your lips to look fuller, go on top of the ridge. And the way you get on top of that ridge is by going in that way. Ooh. Again, excuse me if nothing's perfect. I'm trying to do my makeup, <laughs> looking at you on the phone. Okay, big difference. I'm gonna go back in and go on top of the ridge. Yeah. Can't believe what a difference that makes. Yeah, it's a simple little tip. Okay, now, bottom lip. Really easy tip for this, Katie. Mm. Hold in the middle, rather than, you've got a choice. You can either move the pencil like this, mm. or you can move your head you choose what's easiest for you. And again, on the lip, uh, actual lip line. On the lip line, yeah. So on this way, I, I mean, you, you do whatever you think is best, but I go here and I further up. So I'm looking there. I'm having a marvelous day at work today. <laughs> So nice. Back. Okay, then we're gonna fill with the lip liner. Now the reason we're gonna do this with our lip liners is because if you want your lipstick to stay on longer, you're not only just gonna line, you're gonna fill using the liner, liner as well because that means when, not only does it help keep your lipstick on for longer, it also means when your lipstick starts wearing off, it wears off all together and it's not like the lipstick wears yeah, off and then you're just left with a, a line of, a, a, you know, a, a liner basically. So you look like you're in the 80s. Yeah. So it's, it just makes it, it's a great little tip. Lovely colour. Yeah. So you could stop there. It's a, it's quite a natural colour but there's enough depth of colour there to make your lips look quite stand out. But what we're going to do is we're going to go over the top with a really lovely pinky nude lip. This colour looks amazing on everyone. If you didn't have um, this sort of colour at home, you had more of a darker colour, what you could do, and this is how you can turn every lipstick you already own at home, is assuming it's got like a red or a pink tone to it, you simply put it on the back of your hand, I'll show you, put it on the back of your hand, okay? then you would get a little bit of your foundation or your concealer, tiniest bit, mix it together, 
and then pat it on your lips and you would have made yourself your very own signature lip nude. That's really clever, never thought of that. Yeah, it's just a great way. So if, if you've got a favorite lipstick at home and you're like, well, I'm doing quite a dark eye, so I don't want it to look too heavy, take your favorite lipstick, mix it with a touch of foundation and it will just kind of um, make it a lot more softer so it, do, it doesn't look so heavy also, with your own makeup. Also, a great tip if you've got, because I've got quite a few lipsticks, mm. you know when you buy them and you're like, mm, the colour's yes. just not quite right. Yeah, great, that's exactly. Um, okay, so we're going to apply this lipstick over the top. That feels nice. Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? It's just a, it's kind of, it's statement colour, but it looks natural. And it's sort of kind of matte, but it doesn't feel Yeah, cakey. it's a really velvety mm. sort of uh, look to it. Now, what I'm going to do is because I actually want to make this a touch more nude, I'm going to put a tiny bit of this oh. on the back of my hand. And I'm going to take my ring finger, tiny bit like that. And I'm just going to pat this in the middle of the bottom lip here like that. This is going to give us lip contour, so our lips look fuller. Are you ready for fuller looking lips, everyone? You can do this with every lipstick you own. A bit on the top there, smudge together. Not only does it soften the look of your lipstick, it creates fuller looking lips. Ooh, that Isn't that nice? nice? Now, if you really wanted to go to town. Oh, yes, please. Oh, for our parties, I'd say. <laughs> You're gonna get a lip gloss. It could be a clear lip gloss. This one is designed to go with this lip liner and lipstick. And if you're someone that doesn't like to wear lip gloss because you think, oh, my hair gets stuck in it. I mean, I will say FYI, this one is really, really creamy. But just by applying it, just in the center of your lips, where you put that foundation, you'll get the look of gloss but just with applying in the middle, you don't get that whole sort of worrying about every, your hair sticking in it. Just apply it in the middle. Plus it makes your lips look fuller. Now, do you like that? I tip? love that. Let's have a look, Katie. Oh, that looks lovely on you. So we haven't even started all the tips for smoky eyes for hooded eyes yet, or the sexy Jennifer Anderson eye on this eye. But I'm hoping that you are learning some great little makeup tips here. I'm hoping that my sleepless night last night has been worth it because all I was doing throughout my whole night last night was thinking, oh, I've really got to teach everyone this. I want to teach everyone that. Don't forget that Oh, tip. and I've got that tip and I've got that tip. I've got so, honestly, my brain has got so many makeup tips for you. My whole being is just, I just want you to enjoy wearing makeup, yeah. experimenting it with it, having fun, and um, just feeling really girly. Yeah. It's just really nice. Put music on, get a cup of tea or something stronger. Um, okay, before we do the eyes, I'm going to show you a way you can lift your cheekbones with one product. Mm -mm, I love this. Katie and I filmed a tutorial yesterday, and um, I used this in the in the tutorial. I mean, we were both I, like, I, I'm, <gasps> looks I mean, amazing. Yeah, I'm obsessed with it. Okay, so this is a glow plexion blush. Wait until you see this on the cheekbones. Because when you go out, whether it's the day or the evening, the, if you can get the light to bounce off your cheekbone in any way possible, it could be with a highlighter, it could be with even a bit of Vaseline there. Mm. Something where the light bounces and hits, that bounce will give the look of lift to your cheekbone. Without any fancy contouring, it will give you a quick, instant, lift you can even do it with um like lip balm anything that has a sheen mm. okay tiny pump of this now let me show you this on the back of my hand this is a pinky peachy color so it looks great on everyone you can blend it out so it looks subtle but it's got a really really beautiful radiance to it in fact it's not really picking up the radiance so much in this light but let's hope it does on my cheek because it really does have yes, a beautiful, beautiful, amazing, didn't it? beautiful radiance so when you apply liquid to your cheeks 
use your ring finger because remember your ring finger has the lightest touch and you're going to tap on and then you're going to tap off on the back of your hand because you don't want all of that straight away going into your no. cheek so tap off okay so you've just got a little wash of color on your finger then we're going to concentrate on the on the cheekbone here so the apples here you want to concentrate on this bit here so we're going to pat on very lightly pat pat a bit more on circular motions up towards the top of the ear here we want to follow that lift and that is going to give us lift it's going to give us radiance and it's going to help give our face dimension, glow, and a fresh look to it. So nice. Very subtle, but can you see how when the light hits, it's probably a bit so difficult nice. in this light, but it bounces, looks, it doesn't look like you've got loads on, it looks really natural, but if you look now, look at this cheek compared to that cheek, that looks more lifted. Oh, it looks really, you can see it, you look glowing. incredible. <gasps> Oh, mate, <laughs> you look amazing. You look like a model. You do, you do. This is what oh helps have makeup with friends. Because Katie, just, I'm like I, I starry-eyed over you. You look incredible. <laughs> you look so it. beautiful. Oh, thanks, look, mate. can you see that is really catching that light? And this just looks much more lifted. Okay, we're going to do the other, other side. Very, very easy to do. You don't need any fancy brushes, just your fingers. Lovely. And I mean, in yesterday's tutorial, I actually put this on my eyelids and my lips and it looked really, really yeah, lovely. Yeah, it really looked good. So it's it? a really lovely product. And anything we're using in this tutorial, you can find the links above. And I think I've, it's also in the messages below. So you can see um, exactly what what we've used. Okay, Katie, how's that looking? How am I looking? <gasps> Katie, can I just say, you're even <laughs> applying all your makeup without your glasses on. Wow. And it, it's proof to show how easy these products just, how, yeah, how they foolproof are. they are. You now, if you've got bad eyesight and you're trying to do your makeup, they just they just go on and they look natural. Yeah, They really look really, nice. really natural. Love that. Okie dokie, right. I'm gonna to top up my concealer under my eyes just to add a bit of brightness. Then, what eye makeup shall I do first? Do I do smoky eye for hooded eyes first? Oh, let's see. Or do I do sexy Jennifer Anderson eye first? Do, do we wanna have a vote? Okay, I'm gonna say thumbs up now for smoky eye for hooded eyes. Thumbs up now. Katie will attempt to count the thumbs up. Mm. Mm. Is there a delay or does no one want to learn <gasps> that one? Oh, Ooh. yes, we're getting the thumbs yes. up. Thumbs up for hooded eyes. Okay. Oh, that's, oh, that's a lot. Response. That is a lot. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Thank, you, Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your feedback. It actually genuinely helps boost our confidence as we're doing this because um, I'm hoping we're making it all look really easy and seamless. But um, Underneath, we're paddling like swans. <laughs> well, as much as you can paddle with a dog yeah. on your lap. Um, okay, let's have a view of thumbs up for the sexy Jennifer Anderson eye look. Who wants the sexy Jennifer Anderson eye look first? I'm going to do them both for you, but who wants what first? Okay, let's wait and Ooh, see. I'm thinking... Oh, yes. Oh. Okay. Yes. 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 Oh. Very good. I'm thinking the smokies more. The smokies slightly more. I think people want the smoky eye just a little bit more first. So Let's we are going to do the smoky eye for hooded eyes first of all. So one that our eyes are going to look different. So that might be a little bit off putting, but I just thought I really, really, really want to teach you everything I can for your Christmas parties. So, okay. Has, any, has everyone got a dark eyeshadow? Doesn't matter what color it is, it's just got to be a few shades lighter than your skin tone. 
If you've got any eyeshadows at home right now, please go and get them because you can follow along with me. I can teach you, we can learn together. Don't worry what color it is, just make sure it's a few shades darker than your skin tone. I think often people think that a smoky eye has to be gray. Mm. It doesn't, I think because of the word smoky, you think gray, but mm. actually the effect is just smoky. So you can use whatever color you want to create your smoky eye. So you choose your favorite color. Now my top tip, if you want your smoky eyes to look natural, just go two shades, two to three shades darker than your natural skin tone. That will give you a very soft, natural looking smoky eye. And in fact, we're gonna do that when we do the Jennifer Anderson eye. Nice. But if you wanna go more intense, and you wanna go full on, full on, full on, then you're gonna go for a darker shade. So let me show you. I'm using this palette, Damsel, and I love this because every shade on here could be, apart from that one and that one and that one, but these could all be smoky eyes here, okay? I'm actually gonna go for this shade here. So it's like, like a, mushroomy a color. it's a mushroomy color. I would say, um, Colours that often look quite plain and boring like this one are often create the sexiest smoky eye. They're the kind of shades that you see and think, oh, I've walked past that, not that interesting. But actually when they're on the eye, they look really sexy and stunning. So this sort of taupey mushroomy shade, really, really good. So I'm hoping you might have a similar shade like that at home, but if not, just go for an eyeshadow that's a few shades darker than your, your rim your eyes now brushes what we're going to use first of all because i Which want to use? right one second we're actually going to use a we're going to use a i'm going to clean it off because i've used this already with my bronzer so remember with your microfiber cloths clean every time you apply a new eyeshadow shade if you've just got a few brushes, always clean it off on a microfiber cloth because you don't want to be muddying up your shades. And it's just a really easy way that you don't have to invest in loads of brushes. You can use the same brushes over and over, but just make sure you've got all the leftover shadow on there. You don't have to go and have, you don't need to own loads and loads of brushes. You just need a microfiber cloth. Mm. Um, okay, so. You want to find a, a brush. Do you remember earlier in the tutorial? You can watch it on replay if you if you didn't catch this. I was teaching you about brushes, and when something has a denser, packed-in brush, you're going to get much more um, application of the shadow mm. on, on the surface because it's more densely packed. If you want to go, so if we were, we're not going to blend with this brush. We're just going to pack. The, the product in with so this. To get the yeah. most amount of colour yeah, onto your lid, exactly. yeah? exactly. What I am thinking though, is I don't actually have a blending brush. Mm. Yeah, this one. Oh, lovely mate, Please. you've got one though. Yeah, oh, super. Yeah. So, okay, so you're gonna go in, go in with your chosen shade. What one was it, that one? Okay. Now, when I put shadow onto my brush, I don't go like this. I get it on the tip, I get it on the sides, and I coat and pat like that, okay? That means when you then go to apply your shadow, it's all evenly coated on your brush. That's mm -hmm. really a really key little tip. Then I'm gonna tap off. Remember, we tap off the excess shadow. And do you remember earlier I taught you about applying the color very lightly to start with, so light touch, and then we can build up. Now I'm gonna move this closer, because I want you to, you so hopefully Katie, you can still see what I'm yeah, doing yeah, by looking in there. Yeah, easy for me to snap. In the thing, right. Still got a dog on my lap, so if this doesn't go right. <laughs> um, like bam bam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is for a hooded eye, a smoke, although this, this technique is for a hooded eye, Regardless if you've got a, a hooded eye or not, this technique will still look absolutely stunning on you. And I wanted to teach you a way that you could create a smoky eye, essentially just using two shades. So you don't have to go and get loads of fancy eyeshadow. 
Now the technique we're going to use is we're going to coat our lid and into our hood. So if you have a hood, it's that bit there. We're going to go over the hood with one shade. Now there's another technique of doing hooded eyes where you put a light here and a dark there and then that can also work. But I wanted to create, show you such an easy way for, for a smoky eye mm. that's a foolproof way. A way that you can just do, do it essentially with, with one colour. And to do that, you're going to create... So if you've got a hood, you'll notice... So mine's just starting to hood there. You'll notice that it hoods over this lid here. So what we want to do when we're creating a smoky eye for a hooded eye is we want to create the illusion that my our lids are a lot more sort of open and lifted. So to do that, we want to firstly take the eyeshadow and go over our lids and over that hood with one colour. Now the essential uh, tip here is when we have a hooded eye, so as I say, mine is starting to hood here. Can you see how it's starting to go down, okay? And sometimes that can go a bit further down like that. So what we want to do is we want to not have any shadow go beyond this imaginary line here. And the line is from the corner, sort of not even from the corner, I'd say like a millimeter in from the corner up to there. Imagine that's an imaginary line there. If it helps you, you can get a post-it note and you can stick that there, if that helps you, okay? That's a good little guide. Yeah, that can act as a guide. Or you could get a little um, eyeliner pencil and very lightly just draw little dots up there so you know not to go, go past it and then just wipe it off. So the reason we don't want to go past there is because if we take the shadow past it, it's going to further make our eyes look down, downturned. And we want everything to go up. So we're going to start by placing the shadow in the middle and then we're going to worry about blending it backwards and either side afterwards. Okay, because we want the most intensity of the shadow in kind of this middle strip here. But we want to avoid putting any shadow on, the, on our brow bone, bone here. We want that to remain free of shadow. So you want the most intensity on the lid. So you're going to pat because the, the trick with a smoky eye is to get most of the intensity at the, at the lid and then it kind of permeates up into a lovely smoky look. Love this shade. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? And it, it's the sort of shade you'd probably walk straight past. Okay, so don't worry about any drop down. We can sort that out after. And can you see when I'm putting the color on, I'm pressing and patting. Okay, I'm not going like that. I'm almost pretending it's a little paintbrush and I'm painting a wall. Because normally I would put a shadow on by just brushing. No, if you brush like that, then you're like, what do I do with the shadow here and here? Yeah. We want to get most of the shadow here and where you have your hood, go, hang on, I need to look in the mirror for this. I'm going to go slightly over your hood. Okay. Don't worry about this side or this side, we're gonna blend that. Okay, if you're following along at home, have you got that color on your lid? Don't worry if it's not looking blended, I'm gonna teach you how to blend it. And I'm also going to teach you a really, really foolproof way to always ensure your eyeshadow looks blended. I've got a really good little tip for that. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more intensity on the lid, so I'm going to layer up some more colour on the lid. Now remember, I'm not, I'm not wanting any colour to go past here. I'm not even blending it out yet because if we take this colour too far down there, it's going to take the eye downwards. So just keep it in this little strip first of all, then we'll worry about how it looks after. Right, okay. Now. This is where I feel you do need a brush, okay? So you need to find a fluffy brush. Because it just makes it easier, doesn't it? It makes it a lot easier. Uh, this one's an actual blending brush, but anything that's a, a small head that's quite fluffy, 
that's really gonna help make your eyeshadow natural look natural. The way you hold your brush for blending is you hold it right at the tip, because remember, by holding it at the tip, you get a lighter, you can test it on your hand, hold it at the tip, you get a lighter touch. If you hold it nearer the base, you get more pressure. Mm. You don't want that. The reason you want to blend lightly, you're better to blend lightly and for a little bit longer than go in heavy and go, because mm. it will make sure it's clean as well, because you yeah. don't want to be muddying up your colours. Yes. So if you've muddied up your colours, you go and get yourself Go and get yourself um, a microfiber cloth. Thank you. And take off that excess. Okay, so blending. This part here is, doesn't need too much blending, but the parts that we do need to blend is here, here, and around here. So remember, we don't want to go past our invisible line. So rather than blend outwards, we're gonna start and blend inwards. Oh, I've never done that before. And that is gonna help Avoid the colour going past this imaginary line here. You start going that way, your eye, your smoky eye is going to go downwards and you want the lift for the smoky eye. So you're going to go inwards, inwards for the blend. It all starts to come together and then you take it across and down like a little windscreen wiper. And can you see, as I'm blending, I'm not blending here because I want the intensity of the, of the colour here and I want it more smoky on the kind of hood of my eye. Remember, anything that's dark is going to recess and draw something back. So when we have a hood, that's protruding forward. So when you put a darker colour on it, it's going to retract it back and in turn, it's going to make your eye look more lifted and um, less hooded. So. You could stop there, and that I would say you could be your, your smoky heart. Mm. Smoky high, high. <laughs> smoky eye is halfway there. How's that looking, Katie? Amazing. Let's have a look. <gasps> Such Love a it. nice Just colour. Just do a little look in the in the thing. I don't know if you can see. Bearing in mind, Katie is doing this without <laughs> her glasses on. You see this little bit here. Just yep. blend that a little bit more inwards. This bit here. Yeah, that's it. Blend it a little bit more inwards. That's it. Perfect, just a tiny, tiny bit more. So when you're blending and you're finding, oh God, I'm blending, but nothing's happening. Most of the time is you've got too much uh, residue shadow and you need to wipe your brush and then, and then blend. It's really handy to have a microfiber cloth near you. Okay. So. Okay. so when you really need to blend, you can just use a quicker motion and a slightly more heavier touch. I was gonna say, you got, had a heavier hand than I was yeah, doing Yeah, because, yeah, lovely. Amazing. Okay. Right, okay. What I'm now gonna do is, we've got this lovely smoke going on. Now, if you're, if you're at home, you're like, oh, I, I'm worried that I haven't blended it right, or, you know, does it look okay, or I want my, I want my, um, Perhaps your shadow is a bit too dark and there's too much difference between here and here. What you're going to do is you're going to take your bronzer. One sec, mine's oh, fallen. Yeah. Oh, lovely, Katie. Borrow mine, please. Oh, actually, yours is a different colour to mine. Oh. One sec, I'm just going to go and get. Have Bam Bam here. Oh, <laughs> oh, have a little Bam Bam. bam. On, I'm just going to go and get my bronzer that fell on the floor. Oh, oh no, lovely. what a mess. I've got. You'll be cleaning for a long time after this. Okay, apologies, I've broken my bronzer, I dropped it on the floor earlier. Get your bronzer, dab it in. This is a really good technique. Is that the same brush you're using? Yeah, yeah. I, I just wiped it off. So you're gonna get your brush, your, 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 uh, here, bam, bam, come back. <laughs> gonna tap off, and this little technique, this ensures that not only does your smoky eye look beautifully natural, but it also ensures that if you've got any dodgy blending going on, it just fixes that blend. So then with your bronzer, it's like a transitioning shade. Oh, that's a good idea. And you're gonna start from the corner, not too far, because we don't want to get too far. You're just gonna go in. And you're gonna go right on top of your hood, and that's gonna further push back your hood, but it's also gonna create the look that you've just done. Oh, whole fancy dancy singing and dancing eye makeup look technique all you've done is apply one color 
and then apply your bronzer over the top in the sock in the socket. That's really it's now, like a transitional sort of yeah. Like it's color. like a transitional color between here and here, and you know it kind of gives a look like God. I've just spent ages doing my makeup, but you know, I mean, obviously I've been rabbiting on, um, but you know, you could you could essentially stop there. But I'm going to give you another tip of what you can do with a hooded eye. So you're going to get a lighter shadow. You're going to get a little brush, or if you don't have a little brush, you could use your Q-tip. I'm going to put shadow on the lighter brush here, but on the lighter shadow here, and then we don't want to get too much of a thick line here, but we're just going to put a creamy shade on the brow here. Just there. You know where before we created that real lift there? Do you remember? I'm just putting it underneath that bit now and what that is doing is further just lifting that eye up. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of the same shade. Yeah. Yeah. I need to look in the mirror for this. In the tear duct down here. Dab. Because we want the lift here, but we also want to open this part of our eye there. Nice. <laughs> I like seeing that your reaction. That looks lovely. Katie, that looks amazing. Is, I've never done that before. Have you not? No, no, it does look really nice. I mean, tell, does everyone think they could manage that at home? I'm gonna put a bit more mascara on. Thumbs up, do you think, do you think you could do this at home? Remember, you can watch this on replay, you can fast forward all my chatting. Do you think these techniques would help you at home do your smoky eye? You just yes. need a dark shadow and a bronzer. You don't even have to do the light bits like I've done. I, I think really, that light bits really make I know, a it really does lift it's it. It's like it finishes Yeah, the, it the really does. Look. So, listen, you could go even more if you wanted to. You could, you could put, um, um, you could get, Go get a darker shade like this. I mean, I for me, I'd probably stop here, but I want to show you everything that you can do. Dab off. And then you could just do... Hang on a minute. You could just do a touch there. Is that just on your lash line? Just on the lash line. And what that will do, can you see it's just made my lashes look really thick? I mean, I've got a bit of fallout underneath my... Um, Makeup there, I'll just wash that off. Um, how are you looking, Katie? Very happy. Yeah. I can't believe that just that little yeah. bit of light has made all yeah. the difference. It really does, doesn't it? Now I've got quite a lot of dropout from where I just put that black. So remember, if you're doing your makeup at home, like I've showed you by doing your base first, you know, because it gives you confidence, and you've got some fallout, get your microfiber cloth. You know, dab that fallout away, and then you're just gonna grab your foundation and just put that underneath. Because doing that, it's a lot easier doing it that way than, you know, sort of thinking, oh, I've gone wrong and I need to do all my makeup again. Get all your makeup done first. Do your eye makeup last. Honestly, you build, you can then judge mm. how much eyeshadow you wanna wear. Now, yeah. I will always go, on a night out, I'll always put my more bit more concealer underneath as I go out, just because I think it just brightens it and the layering of it helps it it, it stay on really well. That little dark bit as well, it's so nice. It's, it's, like, have a look subtle, camera. it's like um just a subtle eyeliner almost, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? So remember, um if you, if you did go wrong, I don't think you would with these techniques, but if you did go wrong, you would just get your loose face powder and just dust it over and blend it all and it would just, it literally would just, it wouldn't take the, the eyeshadow off, but it would just smooth it out, soften it out. Like if you feel like, oh, I've got, I've got too much darkness on my eye, you just get your face powder, dust it over, and that would soften all your um, eyeshadow out. Mm. If, if you were, you know, if you were worried. Okay, right, who is ready 
for the Jennifer Anderson. 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 I can't say words. It's my dyslexia <laughs> can't say coming words. up. No, I can't. There's certain words I can't say because. Don't you I'm worry. Dyslexic. I'll teach so you. it comes out funny. I'll teach you. <laughs> teach me. <laughs> What's, how do I say it? Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. I've let it slide I can't this say long, it. I can't say but it. But now it's time. <laughs> now that Friends is finished, um, <laughs> how do I say it, Jennifer? Aniston. And Aniston. Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. That's it. Said it. There's mm. If you ever watch me on a live or anything, <laughs> there's always words I can't say. It's like we won't go into no, it. No, we won't go into it. It's quite a common occurrence throughout the day. I can't say certain words. I think it's I'm just it's lazy endearing. people. It's you know, what can I say? <laughs> okay, right. Let's do the Jennifer Anderson look. Ready? I'm ready. Exciting. I'm ready. Okay, right. Where are we going? This, with this? involves Jennifer Anderson has uh, you know, she doesn't do loads of makeup. But what she does do is her eyes look quite um, on like a on a night out. You know, when I've gone out with Jen. <laughs> yeah, Are you Jen? Best friends, Are you Jen? <laughs> <laughs> She's always popping down the path. Oh, Jenny, <laughs> you're a right one. <laughs> um, she, what she does do is her eyes look quite sexy on the lower waterline. So what we're going to do... Do you remember I told you, you didn't need to have loads of fancy eyeshadow for this. You're gonna take your bronzer and you're also gonna make sure that you have a little bit of water or something damp because I'm gonna show you how you can create sexy, smoky, Jennifer and Jennifer Anderson, can't say her name-esque eyes. For Rachel from Friends. Rachel from Friends, <laughs> Joey from Friends eyes. <laughs> okay, so make sure you've got clean, um, clean uh, eyeshadow brush so you can dust off dust off on your microfiber cloths now I'm really sorry but I just dropped this on the floor <laughs> inspirational <laughs> so, inspirational how's that for product mine is nice how's that for <laughs> look <laughs> sorry everyone I just dropped it um, oh my goodness, this is terrible. All I need now is for the dogs to walk in, for all the uh, powder that's on the floor, and then walk Tread it everywhere. Car. Tread it everywhere, that would do me a favour for the weekend. Okay, you're going to take your bronzer. You're going to do pretty much what we did before. Do you remember, we packed it all on here, and then we took it up into the middle there. So you want to get it all on this centre part here. So pretty much the same as what we did before. Same before, but what I'm going to show you is how you can create a smoky eye with a bronzer, but how when we dampen our brush and put it back into the bronzer, we're really going to enhance the socket. Okay? So apologies because my our eyes are going to look different. But I just really wanted to show you different ways you could do your eyes for, for your festive parties. Now, I've got here, so I'm going to go blend in words. Remember, I was blending in words. Then you're doing a little rainbow along your hood and your socket. So if your socket is there, you want to get it just over the socket onto the hooded bit. You can take it quite high, as long as you leave like, you know, half a centimetre of brow bone. You can take it quite high. Okay. So, Katie, how's that going for you? Yeah, good. Quite easy. Good. Right. Are we ready to change up this by dampening the brush, putting it into the bronzer, and creating more depth of colour in the socket? I'm ready. Okay, so. Yeah, I've got some water here if you need it. Well, what I'm actually going to do, this is a wet wipe, mm -hmm. because I don't want the brush to be soaking wet. So, top tip. Oh, that's a good idea. When you want to dampen your eyeshadows to make your eyeshadows transform to be darker, rather than wet them and get them too wet, get a, a wet cloth and just press the uh, brush into the dampness, because you don't want it to be really, really wet. Now don't worry about your, your shadows or your bronzers after because it will just dry out because it's just water. Okay, then you're gonna get your bronzer. Again, apologies, mine just fell on the floor. Um, inspirational. Um, you're gonna dab in 
And because this is gonna be damper, you're gonna get more intensity of color. And the reason we want that is because we want, tap off, want more intensity on this socket. So you're gonna push into your socket and you're gonna go backwards and forwards and then you're gonna take it slightly over the hood. And that subtle bit of intensity is gonna give the look that you've got like two eyeshadow colors oh, on yeah. that really complement each other, but without trying too hard. So I want you to get a look that you can do at home with minimal effort. I like that. Again, that's quite a nice daytime look. I like it's that. a daytime look. How let me get you in the shot, Katie. So I'm using a slighter um, bronzer than yours, yeah. but it's still looks looks good. Lovely. So hold pinky finger backwards and forwards like that. Then, see, can you see how that's building up? Building up the colour. Really pretty, very subtle lift because remember with Jennifer Anderson's sexy party eyes, she doesn't look like she's got loads of makeup on, but her eyes look really beautifully de defined. Mm. Then, with your leftovers, actually we're going to dry off our brush a little bit. Mm -hmm. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to get our Q-tips. Oh. If you don't have a Q-tip like this with a pointy end, you can just point it and twiddle it in your finger and that will make it pointy. What we're going to do is we're going to enhance our under eye, mm -hmm. make it look soft and smoky, but without using a liner. So we don't want to close our eye up, but we want to make it look bigger by putting, again, apologies for my broken bronzer. Mm -hmm. Dip your Q-tip your pointy q-tip again if you don't have a pointy q-tip you can you can manipulate it in your in your fingers a little bit on the q-tip like that then you're going to use this you're going to take it just underneath on the outer sort of the the outer corner bits here let me show you i'll come closer What this is going to do, it's going to subtly define our eyes and just smoke it out a little bit without using any harsh liner, but make it look really soft, a soft smoky look. And then as I take it out here, I'm going to imagine that there is a line that's going right the way across my line here, up towards the tip of my brow. It's all, imagine if your under eye was smiling like this. Dee. We're gonna follow that line up. We're gonna follow it by using this Q-tip. So I'm gonna put a little bit more on my, on my um, Q-tip. And follow that up there. Because in just a second, I'm gonna show you how you can get a winged eyeliner look if you have a hooded eye without even putting liner on the top of your lid here. It looks like a holy grail, I think. Yeah. So this is giving just a really smoky look. How's yours? Yeah, looking lovely. You see? Really natural. Oh yeah, that looks really lovely. Really nice. Okay, so what we're now gonna do is we're going to take um, do you remember before we had that lovely light cream shadow, this one here? Again, you can do this with a Q-tip. You can put your Q-tip in it. I want to show you ways you can use shadow if you don't have brushes. Dip it in, and then you're just going to press this onto your brow bone, just underneath your R arch. And what this is going to do is it's going to Lift your brow, but also make it look like you've just spent ages doing your eye makeup. Yeah, but in a, not like you tried too hard so way. So subtle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really subtle. But also, do you remember before? Again, if you've got any beauty questions, all the experts at Beauty in the Boutique, all the beauty experts are waiting to answer your every question. I'm gonna put a little bit around the tear duct area there. Pat in with your ring finger. This is my new favourite tip. Yeah, it just really just opens the eye. Can you see? Just very, very subtle. Lovely, just a little open. Yeah, I love that. 
Nice, isn't mm. it? See? Oh, that looks really nice. Yeah, you see? Really nice. Okay, so now let's do what Jen does best. She always wears, I think, a really smudgy, sexy line, but mm. not in an obvious way. So if you've got a liner at home, an eyeliner, grab it now because I'm gonna show you how to line your lids for hooded eyes. Let's, now I'm, I wear this liner every single day. It's, it's um, shade Nubian Brown. It's, um, it's one of my favorite ever eyeliners. It's smudge proof, it goes on really, really soft because when, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna line our upper waterline and then we're gonna show you how you can create a, a sexy cat eye but without having even to go to worry about making it all mm. you know, perfect and everything. But you want your uh, eyeliner to be soft so that it doesn't scratch the eye yeah, because we're gonna line. do the upper waterline. So make sure this is clean, so give it a fresh sharpen. The, these, are, these are new, so these are, these are clean. And then, to, I'm going to move this closer okay, so please. you can see. To line the upper waterline, if you've never done this technique before, I would say after about three attempts, you'll nail it and you'll never go back. Because not only does this create the look of liner, but without having to line the lid here, which can close up the eye if you've got a hooded eye, it also makes your lash line look I can't speak. <laughs> Make your lash line look full and thick without having to put loads of um, mascara on. But the trick is to rather than kind of look at the pencil come near you, you've got to kind of hold your eye slightly up and look down and only line to the middle. You don't need to line all the way across here because believe me, even as a makeup artist, that's that's Quite difficult to do. I'd also like to say this is going to look quite grim. I always, when we film this, yeah. I'm like, oh. so I'm just going to. I mean, I do this. Every, you get used to it. It's something it? you get used to. I do this every single day because this liner is so so soft. It, it's really you don't hardly even feel it. But the trick is just to have it smudge proof because if it's not smudge proof, when you blink, it's going to transfer onto here, and I want to keep that free. Um, if your liner isn't smudge proof um, and you're fine about it transferring then still go ahead or if you have a liner that takes a while to set to go smudge proof then keep your eye open and give it a little woof for it to dry. A woof? A little woof. <laughs> a waft. A, a waft, that's the word waft. I told you I was rubbing with my words. Yes, I'm here to help. Okay. Makes your so, lashes look thicker doesn't it? It does make your lashes look thicker. It looks, yeah, it's just a lovely way to create the look of liner. You wouldn't think of that with brown either. You always no, think black. No, and I think, you know, you always think of black, and I'm not knocking black. It's a great, you know, it's a, it's a good essential mm. uh, liner to have in your kit. But for me, especially when you're doing smoky looks, to have a brown, it just softens everything. Because I want smoky eyes to look soft mm. and pretty and sexy and, like, effortless. Yeah. And I think a brown liner gives it that effortless look because it looks just like it's part of your it, yeah it doesn't look like a liner really okay who is ready to learn how to get a winged liner really easily uh, yes please thank you okay i'm pulling you near Ooh. this is where we really Are you see what's happening yeah okay so right do you remember i taught you about your under eye smile Happy, smile, okay? Oh, that's not my eye. We want to imagine when we're creating this wing that the angle of the wing is going up towards the end of our brow here. So imagine when, before you even go to draw your wing, just draw where you think the angle should be. So if I go there, the wing is gonna go downwards and that's gonna make my eye look like downturned. If I go up here, it's gonna lift the eye. So about there, I'm gonna do a little faint dot. Now, depending on how your eye hoods, so my eye hoods slightly, but it doesn't quite yet crease over this bit. 
If your eye is hooding over this bit, then rather than doing the light that way, you actually want to get your line and go the opposite way so you kind of draw um, over it, if that yeah. makes sense. Give it a try and see which way is best for you. For me, I can go up. But if yours is going there, then you need to go inwards. Mm. So I can go in that way, but you can go inwards. Either way, make sure you've got your angle lifted. If in doubt, um, just see where your cheekbone's going. You want to go that way. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to do a little smudge. Not even going to do a line, it's a little smudge. Then with my pinky finger, before the eyeliner sets, I'm going to take this and drag that up to where my dot is. And that's my winged eyeliner. Very subtle, very pretty, very, very easy. I don't want to do a massive winged eyeliner. I just want it very subtly to go up. A suggestion. A suggestion. A it's a very subtle wing. And that's a way that you can do your winged liner, eyeliner really easily at home with a hooded eye without having to worry like, oh, is it neat, is it not? Just, that's it. Top tip, just make sure you smudge it before it sets. Now, if you wanted to really go to town, then you could take this liner and intensify just at the out, just at the outer corner here on what, the on your inner, waterline. On the waterline, you could do if you wanted oh, to. Oh, I want to do that. Um, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you everything you could do. Um, just on the outer corner. Just on the outer corner. Yeah. Because if I go right the way round with this liner on the inner waterline, it's gonna take away the look of it going upwards. So I want it all to be sort of veering that way. Look. Now, oh, that's nice. does everyone think they could have a go at creating that easy winged eyeliner look? Right, Katie, I'm just- Can only because you, you Only because I know that you don't have your glasses on. I'm just going to thin that. So top tip, okay, this is oh. good, this is good. So if you make a mistake with your winged eyeliner, now, not saying that you have, Katie, but I just want to thin it out a little bit because when you thin it out, it looks much more, um, it, it just looks a bit more natural. Mm. If you make a mistake with your winged liner, now I shared this tip with you, didn't I, a while ago, and you shared it, to oh, a friend do you want to tell the story yeah. so about the, the the quick fix to a winged eyeliner? So I don't know if anyone's got teenagers out there, but the hours spent trying to get eyeliner right in the morning is by teenagers. By teenagers is real. And a friend of mine mentioned that the trick 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 about getting a Q tip and a little bit of like eye cream or moisturizer and just giving it like a, like a little eraser, wiping yeah. it away, has changed my friend's life. She said, we can leave the house, there's no drama. So it's quick. It's, it's quick, quick and easy to do. So you're gonna take your eye cream or your facial moisturizer, you're gonna put a little dot of the moisturizer on the back of your hand, you're gonna get a clean Q-tip. If you don't have the Q-tips with the points, you can simply take your existing Q-tip and twiddle it, just make sure your fingers are clean to get the tip. You're gonna dip it into your eye cream or your face cream, whatever you have at hand. And then this is gonna be used as kind of like a, a thinning out eraser. So Katie's- Are you gonna erase me? No, I'm just gonna thin it out a tiny bit. So if you- um, Like that? Yeah, that's it. Look down for me. I'm gonna thin it out and then on the dry end, I'm gonna... There's a lot of hood to contend with. No, there's not. Have a look, yeah, it's just thinned out a little bit. Where's your pencil, Katie? Oh, here, thank you. So, it's, you've done great here, but you just need to, close your eye for me. It just needs to have a thinner yeah. tail. So if you need to get a thinner tail, take the pencil, you'll use your stabiliser, and then wing it out with your little pinky nail. Because the trick is to get the line to go thinner at the tail. And that's the thing as well, isn't it? Obviously holding a mirror, but 
because when you have a hooded eye, you need both hands, one to hold up the, yeah. to, to pull it taut, and then yeah. the other one to actually lie. Yeah. How am I looking? Yeah, looks good. Looks really nice. Thank you. Okay, so we have got smoky, smoky eye for a hooded eye, and we've got the Jennifer Anderson sexy eye here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of um, concealer underneath here, just before filling shin touch. I always recommend this before you, once you've done all your makeup, just add, and just when you think, oh gosh, I put too much on, just keep patting. It all goes in, all looks lovely, all marries in beautifully. And I'll add a little bit more here, just to add a bit of light. Just brings that brightness, Yeah, it? it just brings back that brightness. And if this is a great tip, if you're, throughout the day, because obviously I've been touching my face a lot doing um, my makeup, but this could be an example of like, you're, you're in the middle of the day and you're thinking, oh, my, my foundation's worn off or my concealer's worn off. If you need to get that look of that fresh faced makeup again, rather than applying all of your foundation again, you don't need to do that. You simply need to reapply your foundation in key areas. Around the nose. Yeah. You know, areas that get, you know, that need it. Under the eyes. That's when chin. you see people that have perfect makeup all day. Yeah. That's what they're doing. I, I always do this, I always cheat. And then middle of the forehead, round circle and things. And that just gives you the look that you've just reapplied all your foundation in the middle of the day. So, Katie. Yes. Are we done? Are we done? Are we done? Oh, are we cooked? This. Let okay. Me, let me Which face. eye do we prefer? Can we vote? Okay, we're going to oh, yes. do. Let's hold it back so you can see both of us. Right. Oh, hang on, hang on. Let's not step in any bronzer. Let's not step in any broken bronzer on the floor. Okay. Okay. What are we covering? Okay, so we want, th right, who's voting for this eye? We're gonna do a vote for this eye first. Okay, do you want to just, Get your dignity back. Get your dignity back, girl. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do a vote for this eye first, and then we're gonna do a vote for that eye. Okay, we're voting now. Who prefers this eye, look? Thumbs up if you prefer this. Okay, we've got a few. Yes, people are liking it. Please some give some lines. feedback. Do you like this eye best? If you do, we need blue thumbs up. Thank you so much for your feedback. Oh, nice. Honestly, it's just lovely to know that oh, people really are watching nice. and learning and enjoying it. That really does mean a lot. Okay, the next vote. Who's voting for the Jennifer Anderson sexy eye? This eye. Which one? Who prefers which one? Oh, I'm we gonna say it's even. Yeah. I'm gonna say it's even, but well. I'm gonna say a little, a few more. That one had more hearts. That one, that one maybe was a bit vanilla. Oh, I don't know which one I. I think for me, if I, for a party, yeah, I think I'm gonna go smoky. Yeah, I, I, I think Just this it's one. A bit more. This one's pretty natural. Well, I see it's not that natural, but, but this one I think is yeah. So. Right, I'm hoping, we're hoping, you've loved every second of, that, of this. Please save this video, share this yeah. video if you want, you don't have to, but it, um, it, your friends might like it. And remember, you can watch it back on replay just to get to the tips that you need yeah. for when you're applying your party look on that night. Mm. So I want you to know that you've got my advice with you as you're doing your party makeup. So this will be on my Facebook page. Um, I'll leave it on until the new year so people have it for all their festive parties. Idea. And you know, you can always, if you're watching it back on replay, you can fast forward the bits that you don't need to learn on. But the bits that you do, have your makeup bag ready and do your makeup with me. So please save this video so you can keep referring back to I it. I also because... really love to be able to see what people have done. Like do, if, if oh anyone feels goodness. confident enough, yes. I'd love to see some actual pictures yeah. of the looks that we've Do you tried. know what would actually really make our day mm. would be if people did their party looks and then posted us a picture. I mean, I With get- party outfit. Oh, well, it might be a bit too much pressure. Oh. But you can do that if you <laughs> if want you, to. I will. But um, 
yeah, I would love to see your results. If you don't feel confident enough about posting them on um, social media, yes. then email them in, help at beautyintheboutique.com. We would love to see your party looks. And I promise you, if you're kind enough to show us how you've got on with your party looks, we will, I'm sure, send you a little gift through the post. I'm sure really, we will. We'd love to be able the to girls see them. And the girls at work would love that as well. So um, just to let you know, we've got a whole team of beauty experts at Beauty in the Boutique, all personally trained by myself, so you can feel confident that you're getting all the best expert advice that is out there for all your beauty needs. So if you're interested to know what I've used in this tutorial, the links are above or below. Um, or if you need any help with anything else, just, just message in, email in. Um, but I hope I've shown you ways you can get the look with what you already own. Yeah, and I'm gonna look really good picking up the kids from school. Oh my god! <laughs> She's and a bit a, much. A wonky eyed. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to walk around like that. And we've had two dogs here that have been really oh, well behaved. We've got Bon Bon. So good. The other two dogs are at work with Crispian. Where's Bam Bam? Bam? So we've got Bon Bon here. Oh, I've got Bon Bon here and I'm so pleased because I was so worried that they were going to end up barking <laughs> and the cats have been really good as well. So they've not made a peep, have no, they? No, they've been really, really good. It's like, it's like they knew. They knew. They oh. knew. Listen, thank you. It goes without saying that I'm forever grateful. We're forever yeah, grateful. We really are. For all your support, for everyone that's, that's watched this video, for everyone that's joined us on this live. Honestly, just having you there just means so much. It's really, really just the best encouragement yeah. and really, truly couldn't, really couldn't do without you. And we were so worried last night. I don't we? know why we, we were worried. We had a sleepless night for nothing. So I go to bed sleep early yeah. tonight, yeah. So I would love to know, would you like us to do another makeup along live tutorial? I want to do one. I, I'm, I'm up really for up it. for it. Yeah. I'm up for it. Goodness knows how long this has gone on for. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm more It could out. be night time. We don't know. <laughs> it could be night time. We don't know. We've got oxygen just blasting in. <laughs> it's like being in a it's Las like Vegas, Vegas <laughs> casino. We don't know what the time is. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for being part of Beauty in the Boutique. It really is. Uh, it really does mean the world. So very thank lucky you. indeed. Very, very lucky. Always feel so grateful to have you with us. So thank you so much. Love you all. Love you lots. Thank you for your support. And see you soon. Bye. Bye guys, see you soon.